Welcome back, elegant listeners. It is I, Atham, on this episode of Tiercy. Zin gets drunk, I look at the local sea life, and we meet a colorful character. Enjoy the episode. Is my, is my audio good, or is Your it- Your audio's good, yeah. Yes. Um, is my audio sounding fine? I was ta- ta- talking to William. Yours is fine. Uh, uh, you uh, yeah, you know, yours is good, uh, Sean. Okay, cool. Um, well, yours is a little bit staticky. Do you want to try it again real quick? Um, Not that it has to be perfect. I've done it worse. Than, I've had it in a fucking submarine, apparently. If you wish Let to come to the I find that I tend to talk kind of quietly, so if I have, like, um, if Discord does its automatic, like, static cancellation, it'll sometimes just cancel my voice, too. Right. Yeah. Will, you want to just come here? Do that. Mike. Is, is it still staticky? It's, a, it's not staticky, it's tinny. It's, um, yeah. Tinny's? Tinny. <laughs> With an N. <laughs> Only what, one um, T. Oh. <laughs> we don't really have a solution to that. That's okay. I think you, you sound you sound good, I think, in, in at like it's not like too distracting or anything like that. I yeah. just was wondering if there's anything you could plug yeah. in you're, not, you're not fading in and out, it's yeah. Um I mean, so, I have, like a very nice microphone, but it is a bit of a walk to get in. Oh, yeah, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Um, I want to say appreciate uh, Will for for um, being very patient with us, considering I've told them, or I've told you guys multiple times that I felt bad because I've been promising having him on for like a while now, and they kept telling me not to cut stuff. I think Self just didn't want to have you on, really, and she was telling me to add on more stuff before oh, you joined. It's also PS5. That's fine. I'll blame her. Yes, exactly. Um, she wanted more time for her romance subplot. Um, but we we are able to join everybody now at a, uh, a nice juncture. Um, we're going to zoom back in to the story at um, the the last part we left off on, uh, which normally we zoom, th- I'd like to do the whole zoom through the clouds thing, but this time it will be, I guess, zooming back up from a tier that fell on the deck. Um, where we see a um, a purple and gold kind of uh, huge galleon that is a um, double the size of the ship you guys are on, pulling away, um, and you see the last little bits of your friends go below deck, escorted by um, these automata bodyguards, um, and then you also have... Um, I guess a puff of smoke, I think. I don't remember exactly how Jens described it, but he phased out of existence and presumably jumped on the ship to act as like a helper following them uh, as a stowaway. So get back into the, the, the emotional state. You guys just realized that one yes. of your No, I'm angry. Rage. Yeah, feel that. Feel the fear. Feel the I, rage. I or I guess just rage for Atham. Index. Just rage. Just, just rage. Um, um, so all the time. we'll we'll tell you what we'll start. Why don't we start with Zin real quick? Um, and uh, um, Will, your character. What, this was all happening in front of a crowd. Um, this is all pretty important because um, Asmars are an important church. Um, you know, fixture, and they're kind of high up in the thing, and the church is, like, as big as the Catholic Church would be in, like, you know, the 1700s, we'll say, about for reference. Um, so, uh, everybody's kind of watching this little spectacle where they get their friends taken. Zin, you just found out that your childhood friend and love interest, who you never really bothered to ask much about, so you never knew this, um, which I actually, I, I want to point out, I had a rule that if you ever asked him, like, directly about, like, his past or anything like that, like, this would have come up immediately. <laughs> so I thought that's pretty funny. I wanted to mention mm-hmm. that. Um, so he is apparently related to a, a pretty important household, the Gold Plumes. Um, he has just been kidnapped, presumably, to act as some kind of bargaining chip in some sort of royal politicking. Um mm-hmm. He used 
uh, he used his his uh, influence to stop you from committing a massacre, which is pretty reasonable, um, and thus cost him his freedom. Um, and the last thing he does is profess his love to you and kiss you before he leaves. Um, so we're going to zoom up from that tier to right into Zin's face. Um, so tell me, what do you, what, what is Zin, what's Zinny, Zin boy uh, feeling right now? Good. He is kind of. He feels like hollow. He feels a little empty, and he doesn't really understand it. Um. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm not okay. Um. I think he's just kind of sitting there in shock. For right now, before he was kind of like, I guess he said they're already on the other. Right. They're, yeah, they're they're. I think below I mean, deck. Like, I think you said yeah. They're they're yeah. They're starting to go below deck. I mean, if there's anything you want to say, you've done. Um, while they're like going up the ramp or whatnot, you can say it now and just say it and say it happened in the past. Um, but um, yeah. for the most part, no no more dialogue is able to be exchanged because they're too far away and the wind the the um, sea wind is kind of taking away anyone's voice across the ships. Yeah. So. I remember last time Zin got um, a, a demolished by these um, war machine things. So he's still trying to pick himself up off the ground, I think. Um, he, he, I mean, people are staring now. I feel like he hasn't quite registered that everyone's looking at them yet. Um, he's just kind of quiet. I feel like he's he's just in a state of pure confusion. And like he like like he had the wind knocked out of him, remember? Like he can he's still gasping mm-hmm. a little bit for air. So he's gasping kind of like maybe trying to go toward Cyril even now, desperately searching. Do you think and he, he we said he was crying, right? We said that he yeah. was like in fact crying. Um do you think he's trying to clean up the tears or do you think that like it for sin it's not unmanly or uncool to cry um he oh i'm gonna do that trope where he doesn't he's never he's never really cried before right so he's a little confused like he he doesn't notice at first until you see like like there's a few like tear drops on the like planks below him and he's just kind of like like you know he's in that stuff like am i crying like 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 He's seen other people do it, but he never understood or or had, you know. So he's kind of just like more like he's looking down after like trying to look up and then he notices that it's falling and he's like, he takes a moment. He's not immediately like, like brushing it off, like crying is manly as fuck, but um, he is, he is in a state of still conf- pure confusion. Okay, so he's he's I guess going through a a tumultuous kind of a storm of emotions here. Um, Will next to your character, one of the I mean, I'm assuming you're in the crowd, kind of watching with everybody. Or do you think you're trying to hide at all, or or? I think I'm just I think I'm just observing. I'm just watching. One of the one of the like the guys next to you, kind of like you know like bumps your shoulder a little. He's like, man, never thought I'd see an Asimar crying. I don't know whether to pray or. You know, maybe maybe we could sell this to some some of the newspapers for a little bit of cash. Seems like something big's happening. Um, how much how much do you think the the, the tears would be worth? Like if you were to collect that, like an angel I mean, like, or something? Oh yeah, that might be a relic for some people. Yeah, I was thinking just the photos though. You know, he's the photos he's, themselves. Yeah, that's. Yeah. No, I tell you what. Tell you what. If, if, if you can distract them later, I'll try and go and collect the tears. All right, fifty-fifty. Okay. All right. Sounds cool. good. Um, so we'll <laughs> jump off from that real quick. Atham, I know you described your uh, your feelings as a little bit uh, one note, but uh, let's take us mm-hmm. through why this is happening and slash what Atham is okay. feeling. Um, we'll work through it logically here. So. Sky comes okay. in, stops the boat, threatens everybody with cannon and and automata. Um, 
knows something about the Golden Order, seems to be a little bit paranoid about you guys, um, and then proceeds to kidnap two of your party members. Um, and now, jumping forward, Atham is angry. What, take, us, take us through Atham's thought process to get from Zen to angry, I guess. This is all my fault. I should... I... I, I, I'm a paranoid man. I should have thought about Cyril's ancestry long before this. I should have been prepared for some fucker showing out of the blue. I should have known a gold plume was coming to a dock. In th hey, how did he get here without me knowing? How did he know Eb was here? He came off the boat with a wanted paper in his hand. I should have known that. I should, Going back to Cyril's whole thing in the village... I just I just stayed in the bar the whole time. I could have I could have done something. I didn't do anything. I didn't back at the and then uh, get it onto the fucking sealing ceremony. I just let a fucking de demonologist walk past me because I was too busy looking for Waldo. This Interesting. Is all bullshit. Angry. I like, I like how. Uh... How you've got two very different responses here. One is very kind of external and unknowing, and then the other is very internalized and self, almost too self-reflecting in a way, too too self-critical. You could say. Is um, Alex saying any of this out loud? Is he like rambling, or is he like? No, is, is, is he is not saying any of this. I mean, you could probably look on his face. You would, you would, you could tell he's really mad about something. And as he's doing that, though, I'm gonna... Zin's still, like, you're basically passed out on the ground. You've got one hit point, right? Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna go walk walk over to Zim, Zin and lift him up, and then... Yeah, you can kind of tell that uh, there's a lot of a lot of eyes on... Like, all of a sudden, I'm assuming Athens gonna be the first to perceive that there's a lot of eyes on you guys, especially now that the other party that was the attraction has kind of left. Now it's just the fact that there's an Asimar crying is kind of a big big news deal in a way so i'm sure assuming atham realizes that first and like everybody's kind of watching sin so um be aware of that when you go over to pick him up i guess yeah i'm, I'm gonna go lean down and just sort of lift lift this in up and i'm gonna look over at the crowd don't you lot have anything better to do it's a big it's a big cloak <laughs> Okay, um, give me give me a quick intimidation check. Just uh, want to see how how effective the crowd dispersing is. Uh, I also want to say yes. that as Atham helps, is he picking him up or is he helping Zin to his feet? Because I want to say that can you stand? He is wobbly, but he can he can lean on Atham. I feel like it'll be a it'll be a very supportive lift then. Yeah. Um. So that's gonna be twenty two. Oh boy! All right, it's very effective. Then um, everybody was like, "Oh God, these two are glowing," um, and and they realize that they they probably shouldn't take advantage of the um, a very powerful church official's tragedy, or at least whatever's going to happen next isn't going to be good. Um, so a lot of them are like, oh, uh, all right, let's make ourselves busy." They all kind of like look around and look away, look at papers or things like that. Um, even the crew that was, um, you know, kind of stopping their duties to see what was going on with the big ship all of a sudden starts to find themselves busy with rope and moving barrels from one side to the next. So it starts to disperse the crowd. Um, As that happens, I'm going to start we're gonna, we're gonna start moving Zin back towards the cabin. Uh, I'm going to try and get out of sight from everyone. Try and get some uh, privacy. So, Will, uh, does your character, do you think that you uh, would be intimidated by 22 or, like, just dispersed with the crowd? Or do you think you would still be interested in these two? I think he's intimidated. I think he's still interested, though. I mean, I think he's probably dispelled any thought of, of making money off of angel tears. But, um, you know, he realizes he can glow, too, right? Like, a lot of people can glow. That's not, doesn't make you special. Um, so he's probably going to, like, sort of, like, I got the approach, sort of, like, walk up. So, yeah, you guys are wobbling to the um, to the cabin door or, like, you know, to the lower decks uh, where your cabin is. And all of a sudden you're approached by, uh, Will, would you like to describe your, or, well, hold on, Zen, you want to do something first? Oh, no, I was literally going to ask Will to describe his character. So you can yeah, I... So that's a that's a, um, a staple of guest characters. Please, everybody's got to get their chance. Um, 
so yeah, Will, please describe your character for us. Sure. Um, I should have like written something down. He is uh, pretty tall. Um, it's like six foot two. I guess not tall in terms of D&D, &D, but in terms of regular human height, perhaps pretty tall. Um, Definitely Max. And he, uh, he's got like weird, almost orangey skin, pretty red hair, like shoulder length. Um, he's got like a big robe on and under that like leather, like pretty thick leather armor. He's also uh, probably one of the first things you know, he's holding what looks to be a really big shield, except there's no way it's a shield because it's made of glass and who would make a shield out of glass? But it's a shield, look, looking object, it's big, it's circular, it's made of glass, it's got a bunch of holes like drilled in it. Can I help you? Yeah, let's, oh, yeah, we, uh... Oh, so I was going to mention, we do the quote of the day thing, so if you hear anything funny, um, be sure to put it in there and attribute to the person. But please continue, sorry. What's, uh... What just happened? I'm just a little bit, I think, understandably concerned about, you know, people getting taken and A political matter. Don't worry, it's, uh... I'm gonna glance back at Zim. It's, uh... Tor Church and Oros thing. Um... Who, uh... I don't, I don't think, uh, you said your name, sir. Oh, no. My name is, uh, my name is Alcaraz. Um, I'm, uh... Hmm. What can I say? I'm a traveler. I'm an astrologer. I do all sorts of things. And, uh, who, who are you? I'm Atham. This is... Uh, I'm mean, gonna look down to see if Zin is responsive enough to, re to respond. Zin's gonna shoot this weirdo a glare. He's not having it right now. This is Zin of the Church of Purity. Zin. Atham, nice, nice to meet you, too. Still glaring. Still. I, he didn't call I me. Wouldn't. He didn't. This. He didn't. He just strolled up, started prying into our business. Like I don't think you have anything to worry about. Um, there's, there's, uh, there's. Now the ship is gone. There's no threat to anyone else here. Well, the ship was gone before. Like the ship, the ship was gone, and then the ship was here. And just because it's gone again doesn't mean it's going to stay gone. That's my, that's my. Well, I can't concern. account for other dangers of the world. That's that's fair, I suppose. Uh, if you'll excuse me, my friend here needs medical attention. Uh, but is I medical attention is actually something I can, I can, I can do. Is there any? Is there anything? What specifically do you need? And he starts, like, sort of looking over Zin. Uh, I'm... I'll be fine. I don't... He's a bit touchy about this sort of thing. You look pretty beat up, I'm gonna be honest. I mean, yeah, but I'll be fine. Hmm. All right. I'll be the judge of that. Uh um, just as you say that, um, oh, by the way, if you could change your nickname, maybe in the server, um, yes, to, I can, I can have to read that. um, that would, I think, help just cause, um, it's a somewhat complicated name. Um, just as you say that, um, the other guy you were talking to earlier comes back and like, Hey, I got a vial with some of the tears. Uh, you want to like, we got to find a fence on the ship or <laughs> just kind of comes up. You are really bad at picking your moments, buddy. Mm, I angry. Uh, I'm a little pissed <laughs> off at this bitch. I hear that and I go like, oh. Can I? Can I? I want to. Uh, I want to give him intimidation glare. Tell him the fuck okay. off. <laughs> so, all right, give, give give me give me an intimidation check, please. I have uh, my conquering presence. Sure, and I think that does that give you advantage? I forget. 
Um, as, as an action, of course, chosen characters need to make a wisdom saving throw or they become frightened for him. Okay. Oh, never mind. So, um, so yeah, give me, give me a quick roll. Is what yeah, give yeah. me a roll and I'll do a save for this. Okay. Well, they just have to make a save, don't they? Yeah, like, like, like I have a, it's a wisdom save. Yeah, I don't think you have to make a roll. Zone. I don't have to make yeah, a Yeah, no, roll. no, but I'm, it's kind of just more of how effective everything is, is it just helps add to the story. This isn't, like, an actual, like... Like, obviously, he's going to be scared shitless, but, like, I'm just kind of how scared shitless is on That's what I'm curious about. Okay. Oh, uh, I have really high intimidation, but I roll mid. Um, 18? I mean, 18's great. Um, so yeah, this guy uh, freezes in his path as soon as he sees it. Hey, I got the uh, the Azamar to oh, and like gets wide eyed as he sees Zin staring up, wake and lucid. Um, and he gets you know the fear condition in him, so he immediately starts like backing away. And you maintain like eye contact with him, Zin. Mm -hmm. so as he does, I'm gonna hold up my hand and pull those uh, tears out of his hand with telekinesis. All right, he's too out of it and scared shitless to notice, and he starts, um, the more Zinn um, continues to maintain eye contact and, like, has the eyes boring into him, he turns around and starts, like, sprinting the other way, um, and he uh, he dives over the other edge, <gasps> oh, shit, and then um, dives over the edge of the back of the thing where, um, thankfully, there's a few, like, uh, safety nets or like fishing nets i don't know exactly remember what those are called at the back um but uh, a couple of the sailors like ah oh, god damn it um it's like johnny we're gonna need a, like another a few more crew we're gonna pull this jackass out he's somebody went over the edge again um and they start fishing him out from uh, the side um but yeah the the vial floats from his hand into yours at them um and yeah you guys are you guys are back well mr alcarab i why don't you, uh, if you are interested in just sort of catching up on the going song, why don't you meet us for dinner tonight? That sounds lovely. All right. All right. I'll look for you at the ship's galley. Come on, Zin. And I'm going to start just kind of keep on shuffling Zin down towards the cabin. I just want to go back to Finn. You just want to yeah. Go. Well, we're not taking you back to your room. All serial stuff is there. <laughs> oh, 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 thinking ahead. I like that. There you go. That will make me sad. Yeah, that will be no, sad. We're, so we're, we're going to we're going to Athens cabin for this. Okay. Can I, I technically get myself in on here, but I don't know how much health stuff Athens can do. Like, oh, you also have your own lay on hands and stuff like that, so you're probably. That's fine. what I just said. I was, I was just, I didn't know if Atham had many healing spells or anything like that. So I was just imagining Atham like eventually putting Zin down and just like taking Zin's own hands and mushing them to Zin's face and making him heal himself. I could do that too. I was mostly going to check to see if you were poisoned. If those were assassin robot things, most likely they had poison. Oh yeah. Okay. Anyways, continue. Take me. Take me. Yeah. All right. I do that. Um, I will look over back my shoulder at uh, all right. All right. Um, I don't know. Seven ish. I don't have a watch. It's medieval uh, times. I'm good. <laughs> I bought a yeah. sundial on my wrist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, wouldn't uh, Atham's sundial be all messed up on his wrist because he literally. Yeah, it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, nah, damn, what? it's fucking noon. Still. Don't, how is it always noon? <laughs> um, shut up. Shut up. There we go. Alright, sorry about that. Um, yeah, alright. Um, yeah, I was gonna put, uh, put Zin down on a bunk and just start sort of examining the wounds, see if there's any... <laughs> Very nice. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to sort of examine the wound, see if there's anything to be worried about, and then just start start healing Zin until he's conscious enough to do his own healing. Yeah, uh, so it's pretty easy to examine. He wasn't um, mortally wounded by anything. They kind of just used the butts of their sta stabs um, on him and uh, 
kind of broke a few things here and there, mainly ribs, but you know, a few healing those get writer's reign. Um, I break ribs all the time. But <laughs> I I mean... get, yeah, you do, uh, honestly. Um, in fact, you you just broke your ribs in the ceiling fight like a week ago, so these the ribs have been uh, powdered. Cracked as hell. <laughs> <laughs> um. So while you guys are kind of like. What does um, what does Atham's healing look like specifically? I'm kind of curious as to how you would you would kind of make that look. It is um, well, he's he, he does reality bending, right? So he is like stitching wounds back together, just with like basically telekinesis, um, and the like. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's obviously it's obviously gold in, in color. I mean, come on, it's obviously gold. Uh, obviously, I mean, yes. Yeah, Gotta, gotta oh, stay on the brand. Um, after we just got traumatized by gold feather people. Oh, yeah, whoa. well, I will see him in court. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's not like most royals like to be gold something or other. Or have Well, actually, now that I think I was it, first. Uh huh. All right, well, fair enough. Um, yeah, but you don't have the feather and wind motif, so, you know, that's that's I it's distinctly trademark difference. Um, yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> just no, no gold. I'm not trademarking the feather. I'm trademarking the gold. <laughs> oh my I'm god! An entire color. <laughs> it's not just the color; it's the material too. Yeah, you'll notice that there's not been yeah. a lot of gold and jewelry and in, in, in Tiercy for a reason. And the element itself, like yeah, down exactly. Too. Of course. Of course. Um, so. Um, while yeah, you're doing so, that, yeah. you're kind of—I'm guessing—in some kind of like meditative state. Um, what, Zin? Not, you know, I'm, this will say this takes a little bit. You guys are kind of having a moment of quiet in the cabin. Um, Zin, you're just kind of left alone with your thoughts for a second, even though Athens there and you're in the, his cabin. Um, you're still processing everything. Um, We've got the emotions down, but I want to hear now what, like, what are the thoughts immediately? Like, is it, we've got it, like, I've got to find him. Uh, no, I've got this mission to do. Like, what is your, your now more complex thoughts? Because um, we didn't get to it too much last session, but, I mean, I think Zin would know that this is, like, a huge meeting that is happening among a bunch of world nations, and you have to get there soon, because you don't know what might happen with all the shit that's going on, like. You can. I think Zinn yeah. has enough to know that, like, just being an Asmar, any of his duties are like world-ending potential threats. So, um, with that in mind, yeah, what do you yeah. think? What's like going through his head in the complex side of things? Um, you kind of put some of the like what I was thinking in words already. It's still kind of a swarm of like this intense desire to like like he just had something important to him taken away um and even the most bare bones like sense that's like annoying as fuck for him something that's like never happened um and he's kind of in the state where he's like i have to go how dare they like 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 he's he's still confused about the old the emotional stuff he's almost a little angry that Cyril didn't even fight back a little mm. bit. He's, he's he's like. There we go. Now we're getting into some co complexity here. That's the good shit. He's getting like he he just kind of gave in and walked away, and it was all way too fast for Zin to like register. Um, I want you to give and, me a history check real quick while thinking that. Okay. Or insight, um, whichever one you want to use. Wait, you said history or history or insight, whichever you'd prefer to use. One sec. This one. Okay. Uh fort. Uh and did you use history or insight? Uh I use Which one did you say, sorry? Insight. Cut out. Oh, there. Yeah. Sorry, you cut out for a second. So, Whoa. you. Th <laughs> I want you to think back 
as Zin to even before, um, you know, Zin, Cyril and Zin were in the party together. And, you know, you think back to all the trials. Um, you think back into one in particular, you know, it's the day of, um, I don't want to say just trials, but kind of the day of sorting uh, or something like that. I'll come up with a better name or you will later. But um, it's the day when you take a trial to determine what sort of role you will have in the church um, that the the children go through that are at um, the 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 islands uh, the purity island or whatever we'll call it. Um, basically, you remember that you were chosen as a paladin, um, even though some of the Asimars can be uh, clerics or even preachers, which is very rare though. Um, and do you think? Why do you think Cyril was chosen as a cleric over being a paladin? Oh, um, well, because, uh, he, I feel like he always was this, like, gentle person. Like, he was always, um, very thoughtful and thought out and was, like, okay with, like, weaponry and stuff, but obviously he wasn't it, so gung-ho about that. He was more... He was more focused as, like, you know, on, like, 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 the healing and, like, the, the more interper, like, that sort of stuff. Like, he was far more... As you say that, or as you think that, I should say, um, you snap back to an, an image in the trials when, um, after you have done the trials of endurance to kind of determine physical aptitude, there is, um then a race slash kind of a battle to get to somewhere first. And you remember passing Cyril who had stopped and kind of hamstrung his, his chances of getting into the higher um, bracket because he stops to heal an injured bird who had fallen out of a tree. Um, and you kind of remember just that immediately in your mind. Um, and then you go back again to that moment that was just happening, and you can see that he had the same look as he was looking at that bird as you, to, as to Zin, um, when he was passing him. Um, so, do you think Zin kind of feels that connection enough that he would understand what, why Seal wasn't fighting back? It's okay if not. It is. It is kind of... That that thing kind of mm -hmm. echoed in his mind where he like connected the two pieces, but I'll say that much. But whether or not he figures out maybe what Cyril was feeling, I'll say is up to you. Hmm. You know what? Zin always fails to make connections about these things, but I'm going to say he does for once. For once, he finally like puts two and two together, despite being an idiot. I, at first, my mind went to, oh my god, Cyril thinks I'm a dead bird? But the... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's like... Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so we'll say that. And then we'll pull back a little bit to um, Atham, and we kind of went over your more complex side um, thoughts at the beginning. Um, so we'll kind of reverse it in a way where you recognize that you've, you're feeling angry. And Atham is no stranger to anger, per se. But would you say it's fair to say that um, it's been a while since Atham maybe has felt such... I don't want to say genuine, but maybe close to the heart anger as he has in recent times? It's probably been a while since it's, he's traveled with a a band that he's been this close to, correct? Yes, for sure. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's... <laughs> honestly, there's always something for Atham to be mad about, but yes. Mm. But do you think that after... You know, it's kind of one of those things where it's like when you become good at what you do and you've you've been in a position of power and esteem for so long you know things kind of crystallize over time like things that might have been intimidating or or worrying or whatnot or give you extreme emotions over time they kind of are like you know how to deal with them and 
would you say that your would you say that your um this anger oh, is kind of, management is very good yes so this is probably would For you how say angry he is he looks positively serene but he still looks angry yes but the anger Relative. is kind of a fire to like a crystal so do you think that Atham like does that do you think that shocks Atham at all in terms of like that he's made a connection again in such a long time maybe no no why would that, why, why would that be shocking <laughs> that's that's perfectly reasonable and do you you said you said something to me before that I don't think you said in game is that when did Atham really get angry during the oh, whole it was um yeah, it it was. I mean, it was hinted hint out in the recording, but it is it is when Eb got picked up and grabbed. Um, which there's a few reasons for that. One of which might have been uh, some some uh, uh, cl classical instincts, but uh, also the, the fact that he, the fact that this guy f somehow knew Eb was going to be there. That and he didn't. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't. He predict that and for now that she's off somewhere getting thrown into a prison and maybe the black hands could get her anyways getting off track um <laughs> yeah no unacceptable mm -hmm. we're gonna zoom out i guess on that scenario where you guys are both kind of l left to your own thoughts in the room together and um we're gonna go to al -Karab. Um, who I guess is preparing in his own room uh, for his his dinner tonight. Um, so Alcarab, I guess this is this is still a unique scenario for you. This is kind of new territory, and and so to speak. Uh, what do you think is going through his mind? I mean, this is like the first step of his journey in a lot of ways. So, and he's seen an intense scene to start off. What's going through his mind? How is he feeling? Um, is he excited for dinner? Uh, I think he's pretty excited for dinner. I think he's a little bit confused. Um, just because he doesn't know. I also don't really know the context behind the scene, so it works yeah. out. Um, but he also doesn't really know the context to the situation. So he just like saw a ship. He just saw some people get snatched up and then it left. <laughs> um, and now everybody's sort of acting like, you know, it's none of his business. Um, and he, I think, is a little bit nosy in general. And, but also, like, he's on the ship that that guy. So I think he firmly believes that this is his business. So he's excited for me. Mm. Um, and do you think how like I I don't know from what I can see from Al Karab already is um, do you think he gets gussied up at all or do you think that he's just gonna wear what he was wearing for his adventure clothes um, I mean there's a formal area for for officers and other the like to to be able to sit um, and then there's also kind of just the common mess area with just more benches and like kind of picnic table esque seating um, if that makes sense I think. I think he already wears his best clothes, like regular. Mm. Um, like I think he he wakes up and gets dressed for dinner. Um, so um, maybe he'll like I don't know if he has like a lint roller or something like clean up his robe a bit. But it's already a kind of a robe. Okay, that makes sense. Um, I'm trying to think. Anything else? Um, you do notice your is is glowing a little bit. It's thrumming with a bit of energy um, as the the sun falls and the stars come out along with the moon. Um, the the shield itself is kind of pinging off of the constellations as you pass under them. Um, and what do you think? What does it glow like? What's the color of the shield, by the way? Did you mention it earlier or not? No, I think it's probably. Faintly blue. That's how I always picture it, like a blue light. That's good. Uh, you know, it and was. I think it was he'll, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I think he'll go up uh, like on deck as night falls, like before dinner. It'll sort of sort of stand like against the like against the gunnel and stare out. 
Nice. Let's. I can. We can imagine that. I think Al Karab just looking out at the stars wistfully. Um, you know, it was funny, Cameron. I mentioned um, to Will that he could he could be an astronomer, but he said that a <laughs> were superior to astronomers, and I was like, "Whoa, that's a hot take, buddy." I don't know if that's that can be. We can say it on air, but you know, he was insistent. Uh, that's that's why. That's why I'm redacting this entire <laughs> session. Uh, section. <laughs> I the, uh, recording, I think like. that. I think that he would describe himself as an astrologer over an astronomer, just because of, like, I don't know, he's like magic. So like. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's totally in character. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so astro in in Will's major mm -hmm. in astro geophysics stands for astrology, not for astronomy. Mm -hmm. Just so you know. Oh, astro geophysics. That's pretty cool. Don't. Yeah. I should not have mentioned this. They're not going to shut up later. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're, yeah. We you got to be careful. I like these some exoplanets. Come on. Yeah, listen. You've got to. You've got to drive a wedge between them. So if you don't, you don't bring them together. Okay. Le learn from the best. Um, so we're gonna go back to Athman's Inn, and um, the healing is finished. Um, it's no longer quiet in the cabin. You know, the sun is starting to fade. Um, and there's just the sound of water rushing by outside and a splash of different things. Um, and I mean, basically, yeah, you two have a chance to talk to each other if you have any questions. I mean, we've talked a lot of out of character, but do remember that um, we haven't really talked a lot in character since the session ended pretty much immediately after everything happened. So try to remember what your character knows versus what you know in case you have any questions that you want to make sure is clear your character also knows. Um, yeah. Because we could all learn a thing or two from Alcrab. You know, you got to be curious once in a while. Yeah. Do you think the church will help? Help with what? I'm just gonna raise one long eyebrow. <laughs> well, church doesn't care. Do you say that in character? Well, yeah, because yeah, I mean, the church isn't gonna care about two individuals. What do you want to do then? There's a few options before you. I'm willing to help. In... If you're not uh, interested in talking, I just outlined them basically for you. If you're just going to sit there, no, 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 no. Zin, he's he's just kind of he he thinks for a second. You can tell, like almost on his face, he wants to say one thing, but he he he's conflicted by both. Like you know, like he doesn't want to. He he knows what he has to do, as. Like a like an Asimar and whatnot, um, and he doesn't want this this confusion, this emotion to get in the way because it's never never has before. Um, I don't know if Atham can sense that when just as or something. Atham's sensing. I mean, I I could probably just face read that. I I think my mind reading abilities on Zid have been pretty limited. I yeah. think we've established. But yeah, and I, I think, think I think I get this just by looking at hiding yeah. emotions. So I don't think it, mind treating is necessary. <laughs> I mean, I could probably have just guessed that without even having to look, though. So yeah, that's fair. I just I was just saying, I don't know. Um, no, that's fine. Say. I, I I don't I don't know anymore. Well, first option would be to just abandon Cyril to his life of luxury as some kind of court prince. Zinn gets a little upset at that. He's like, no. Yeah. I didn't think you'd like that either. The other option would be reverse kidnapping. Where the two of us go and knock down the door of the gold plumes, kill everyone in sight, and steal off at Cyril into the night. Very daring. Very romantic. But I don't think Cyril would approve. And I don't think the church would approve either. In, or Oros. You'd have 
a lot of people after you. Yeah. And then we have to, you know, everything with the flower aisles now, and I can't negate that. I still have my, like, my missions to do. Oh, like, yes, no, of course. The, the flower aisles is... It's just... Relatively speaking, much more important at the moment, but there's no harm thinking to the future. And that brings us to the third option. Oh, wait, wait, wait. When Atom says future... Um, Zin's gonna think back to a few episodes ago where Cyril asked him about what he wanted to do in the future and he's gonna think about that conversation a little bit. Sadness. Yes. Mm. Very the sad. third option is we can't remove Cyril from Oris. We have to remove the reason why he's there. The reason? something to do yes with. so it's gonna almost feel like bad like he feels almost a little stupid because i mean i it, it i think cyril also just said it and it was obvious that like it had something to do with the the village um oh no no i mean the reason why the gold plumes want him to stay well why they called him back for their political maneuvering that had not occurred to Zin. <laughs> he is not the brightest. He, he just mm. like... He... This does bring up a good point, though, Atham, that you, you kind of realize that Zin hasn't maybe not fully internalized that um, uh, what caused this whole thing in the first place was that he tried to call a massacre on the village that was infected and Cyril used his ability to stop it. So Yeah, I'm, I'm straying away from that, I'll be honest. So you're choosing not to tell him the truth, or, like, outline it, I tell guess. Him. I'm not going to outline that specific part. I'm, there's, I mean, just because that's... I mean, that is true, but he's also been called back because the gold plips eat him for political maneuvering. So I'm not lying. I mean, no, no, I, yes. I, you're, you're telling the truth, but I am saying that you're... I'm just not retreading trauma. I mean, come on. I don't think the trial is not even there technically because he doesn't really see it. It's not there yet. Yes, yeah, it'll yeah. be there, I guess. All right, fine. <laughs> That's, all right. Um, okay, yes, continue. Sorry. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah, political maneuvering. So, if we can't, I mean, killing, uh, what was his name? Gotspar? Killing Gotspar would probably make. The situation even worse, because um, that Cyril would be even more needed to uh, reinforce the family. So we could just remove the entire power structure of Oros. I thought you said we couldn't murder everyone. Well, I said we could just murder all of the gold plumes, because then there'd be other houses. So we murder all of the houses of Oros? Well, a bit more finessely than that, but, um, and not murder. Otherwise the entire country would descend into chaos. Um, yeah. if only you knew someone who was insane enough to try and take over a country. Yeah. Mm. Something to <laughs> consider. Something to consider for later. Zin does not know who you are referencing to. Um, you asked about the Golden Order before. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, did, did, did he... I, I, I know I think a little bit, um, but also, like, I know you mean... I know you mean you, but Zin's not going yeah, to. Yeah, I know. I, I know. Yeah, no, I, I get that. I'm just, you take over yeah. Or? Okay. Um, that sounds that sounds like character. Uh, okay. Um... <clears throat> I don't know what to say now. I said, well, I don't know what it was. That's... Okay. Um, well, let me, let me put it on... Oh, God. No, no sorry. Go it's going to start ringing? Right. I'll, I'll let you finish what? your sentence. Sorry. All right. All right. Well, let me put it this way. 
Between the two of us, we're two of the most powerful people on this planet. I think we could work something together. That's true. Maybe I could, uh... If I return to... the island, maybe I could... And he's like, he kind of trails off a bit, thinking, like, maybe I could, but... Um... And as, as, I think as he says that, and he's thinking of that, he gets a slight pain in the back of his head. Um, but... Uh, of course, we can't do much of this with, uh... The Jiminy Cricket over there. <laughs> well... Is there a cricket? <laughs> no, we're... He's... <laughs> You hear, <laughs> and you, hear a cricket, ping, really. you feel a ping um, uh, at the back of your. Um, oh, oh it's apparently there's an anachronism somewhere. But um, anyway, you're gonna have your your watch is gonna ping. It's twelve o'clock again, but uh, you can guess that it's close to seven p.m. So it uh, should okay. be time to to yeah. get to uh, to dinner soon. Hmm. All right. Well, we're meeting that uh, guy for dinner. So. Why? Are you going to wear... Eh. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Why not? Why not? Were you, were you going to do something? Did you have plans tonight? No. <laughs> this is me, that... He goes, no. Well, I didn't have plans either, so. And... Or we'll make our way. You guys make your way to the um, small eating area for um, the different people. Um, and uh, basically you see some of the officers sitting in a back room eating, um, you know, and drinking out of their little special wine cups that you see a lot of sailors of that area drink from. Um, crystal. And uh, you pass on the, on the way and you see that the uh, the chef is serving out some different um, rations for the night. He gives everybody a cup of grog, um, which actually is a real drink. I learned that a while back, which is very interesting. Uh, I've actually wanted to try it. Apparently it doesn't taste bad. Apparently it's pretty good, but you know. Well, I uh, think it depends on the grog. That's true. Um, Boys, are we grogging tonight? <laughs> if I, I don't have any rum on me, but I guess I, I have like uh, I do have um, vodka in the house and and lemons and and uh, and water, so I guess that could work. But anyway, um, what it's is not that? Actually I was gonna say, <laughs> looks like monster. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh yes, so you guys head down there. Um, there's some hard tack uh, biscuits. There's um, some peas and uh, a pea and like ham kind of soup, um, grog, and uh, for dessert there's some kind of weird um, pudding that's got like, uh, and this is like the English style pudding where it's more of just like a piece of bread with some like raisins or currants in it um, with some, uh, that's the old style of pudding, trust me. I've watched a lot of 18th oh. century cooking videos. Uh, I, I, I have, I, my family's English. I, I know what English pudding is. No, well, there's, no, no, no. There's a difference between like what's now English pudding, but like when it was described back in like the 18th century, a pudding was generally some kind of like. Well, pudding is anything in England. Well, that's okay. Well, now you're seeing that what I'm talking about. All right. Um, yeah. Now, what's so, my grogging quote in the in the quotes of the day? And I'm a little bit. Oh. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah, Tony, put the grogging quote in, please. Uh, I was gonna. I leave most of that up to Max, just because he's. Looming precariously yeah. in the background. Hey boys, we grogging tonight. Oh my god. Um. So so there's gonna be then that yeah with some currants and like some some simple syrup I caramel know. stuff. Um. And uh, Alcrab, do you think you're you're are you the kind to get there early and wait for them, or do you think you're gonna be fashionably late on time? Anything like that? Is anything to establish kind of uh, I guess your character here? I think Alcarab would um, probably get there pretty early. Not pretty early, maybe like 10 minutes early. 
I think he'd, he'd try to, you know, he considers himself to be a bit of a dandy. I think he'd try to, like, adopt, like, a, uh, I don't know, like, a, like, an actual sort of, like, I've been waiting for you sort of, sort of position. Okay, yeah, so you guys see him, um, and, uh, I guess this is probably one of the few places Zinn is not, or, like, places Zinn is probably gonna eat shit food for once in his life, um, and Athen is probably used to traveler food, but so why don't you tell me how you guys kind of approach it? Are you do you go right to your guest or I guess friends now or acquaintance maybe is better? Uh, do you get food first? Um, tell me, tell me what you guys think your characters would do in this like this dimly lit lanterns waving overhead as the boat rocks back and forth and uh, bland but filling food for your stomachs tonight as the, as you can kind of hear the water rushing outside. What, do, what does Zinn and Atham do? So so does it look like 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 you go up with like a, a tray and you like you get served stuff like like like, like a high school like Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, there's some like pewter or whatever like mugs and, and plates and whatnot. You kind of just go up, you get a little bit of the mush, a little bit of the hard tech biscuits that have been soaking to make sure that they're not cement level tough um and uh some grog at the end in like a big barrel uh wooden barrel with some uh, of those pewter cups to to do out of a little spigot um that's kind of what it looks like oh i think that's actually quite literally probably what zin says anyways he goes like when he's handed all this shit look like all this like mush or whatever the the heck he's given he just kind of goes oh Have you never been on military rations before? No. I... Uh. Mm. Do you... I'm a little shocked, actually. What do you... <clears throat> uh, uh, Excuse uh, me. Athens just going to grab some grog. Nothing else. Um. Mm-hmm. Good, good. I feel like... I feel like... Zin, when when Atham says that, goes like, "Do you know who I even am?" And he says that in a way where he's trying to make a joke, but he's not. It's not. He's not good at it. So he's Whoa, like, he's like, be like "Do you know who I am?" Like sort of thing. Like he's trying to cope right now. Like like obviously I haven't had peasant food. Like I'm fucking Asimar. Like where the fuck would I have peasant food? I had no idea the church officer corps was so well, well stocked. No. Zin doesn't get it. Supplies, bro. <laughs> oh how to use. Anyway. Um, oh crap, how do you think you're reacting to the food and the, the, the new atmosphere and all that? Um, I don't think he's particularly fond of it. Um, I mean, he's a, a, a bit of a traveler, so he's used to, like, not great food, but usually he can, like, supplement it by, like, hunting or something. Um, so this, I think, is a, sort of a bit of a new experience. Um, just not necessarily that there's food, but that there's just, like, no water. Okay, nice. See that. Um, so you guys sit down, you're all talking to each other, or you can start talking to each other. Um, uh, Cyril, or Cyril, Zin and, um, uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh my god. Zin and Atham, can you make me a quick insight check as well? Zin doesn't trust sure. this guy. He's a little standoffish. He is not talking much. See, this is what I was talking about when I was trying to, I was making sure that, I, again, I wasn't talking about you when I was talking about Lone Wolf stuff. I was talking about them, potentially. So, uh, so here's the problem. I, um, I rolled a nat one. <laughs> oh, bro, fire your dice. This always happens. <laughs> you gotta roll out your I'll dice. I'll send you a set of mine. Mine seem to roll well. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, Zin, Zin's not going to say much anyways. He's too traumatized right now. So I don't think he's... Brain from losing Cyril. Yeah, I know. Man, that really hits you hard. Um, it's like somebody's taking a crowbar to your heart. And your brain. Um, 
I'll say this Al Karab seems like a very trustworthy guy. He's not going to stab you in the. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, no, he he. Um, yeah, you don't notice jack shit. I guess is the reason. <laughs> all you're thinking about is Cyril. Um, yeah. Matham, you you do notice that um, in Zin's kind of melancholy about Cyril that. Um, you, I mean, yes, you have thought about her, but um, there has not been much attention paid to Eb at the moment, um, which means she's probably, she's been taken alive. The one poster specifically mentioned alive, which you could probably, you, Eb had seen earlier in Templon, but uh, was also brought out again by uh, Gotspar. Um, so she's not in any immediate danger of dying, and you would probably know that given that she is now associated with a very famous international criminal organization, um, there's only one or two places they're likely to take her. There's one on Island, um, prison that is close enough. That would probably be a likely candidate given your knowledge, um, which would likely be called Scar Thorn would be the name. Eb Alcatraz arc. I mean, yeah, that is kind of what's what's happening on Sunday. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. But she's a sneaky sneak. She's a chill before. Well, um, I mean, she, she's getting thrown in the fucking slammer, man. So you can't start to sneak her. Right. <laughs> uh, but yes, it's called Scarthorn is the name of the island prison that uh, is, is an international um, kind of dungeon prison for the worst of the worst. International criminals of the worst kind. Um extra planar entities that pose a serious threat to any of the like institutions of the world, such as the seals, um, forbidden knowledge and magic users are generally sent there as well. Mm. So it's not a nice place. It's a very kind of big Citadel prison that is, um, famously, um, some kind of weird druidic leftover that is, um, was built on a bunch of giant thorn branches um which is where it gets its name uh and that's about it i'll let you guys kind of discuss as you sit down with all this on your mind um uh, alcarab you see that atham is drinking grog i guess and might be lost in thought or might not i don't know i'll let that up to him but uh, zin definitely looks to be um zoned out and not even like paying attention to you for some reason yeah so yes. zin's kind of um He's like looking at the food. He's like hardly actually eating it. He's kind of like, I think he probably tried it. And he's just like, 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 like he, at one point he definitely picked up a fork. It was like, I, I, I can't, I have to describe that. I forgot people can't see <laughs> they it. Can't. Like picks up I'm, a, I'm not a animating fork. this. Um, he like picks up a fork, goes to like, 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 he picks some little bit of food up, whatever it is, like, kind of goes to lick it, like, like a small little bite, and then he, like, kind of makes a face, and he goes, like, Ugh. and then he realizes it's really not that bad, so he kind of just goes back and does the same thing again, but he's mostly zoned out, besides for that, he is not thinking, he's kind of, like, he's kind of, like, hollow, you know? So, uh, Al Karab, where'd you say you were from? Uh, oh, I'm from, well, if you ask my, my, my mother, she, if, when I ask my mother, she'd tell me I'm from, you know, the wind and the, the earth and all things, all things natural. I'm from Oryx originally, although I don't, oh. uh, I, I, I'm a bit of a wanderer. I've been all over. Oh. Yeah. Very interesting. Um, wonder is that do you have a profession outside of that or is that your occupation um well wander is not much of an occupation i uh i'm an astrologer i uh study the i study the sky i study the stars um, i've made it actually my my life's goal to, to map all all the sky which is a little bit intimidating quite honestly but um, it's kept me occupied very interesting. And, uh, where's where's the ship going exactly, Sean? 
I forget. So a lot of these it's people going, are. It's it's going toward um, the summer or sorry the flower aisles. Um, the the a lot of the people on board are um, you know some uh, just like minor personnel um, for um, for the different delegations and things like that. You know, there's some probably like uh, researchers, things like that. Um, ship uh soldiers career soldiers thing just like general people that ha would be called to such a conference because uh, it, it isn't just the delegates when these conferences are called it's a lot of people so um this was a special one um that uh in the all of the confusion it's probably the quickest way you could get there so it's going to stop near the the flower aisles and you could probably like hop a little skiff or something like that and head over there um but yeah it makes a few stops along the way as well um in the atolian part of Oros. And um, it can make a, a few of the random isles, the free isle or the free islands that are in the middle of the Great Basin Ocean. If that kind of answers your question. Um, yes. So, why are you heading to the Flower Isles for the uh, summit? I. Uh, I'm actually. Look, I, are you familiar with this area? Reasonably. I've, I've done some mapping in my day. I'm looking for, there's a, a, an asterism I'm trying to, you can only map from, uh, there's like this one region and I sort of have to be fast in like a few nights from now, and upwards for the next few months. I think it's like a city or something like that. It's called like Scarthorn or something along those lines, but I'm looking for, for such a place. Do I know anything about the show? Uh, the place or the or the event? Uh, I suppose both. I was expecting the place, less the event. But I'll if I yeah. Well, I'll that's that's, that's what I just prison, was I right? muted or did I did I mention that just now? That yeah, I was talking about. Been, oh, is that the yeah. oh? Gotcha. Oh, it, okay. I miss. Yeah, I misunder. Misunderstood. He, he, he misunderstood. He I, 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 did, I didn't forbore. I, <laughs> I don't know what I did. Um, okay. okay, so you're... Okay. So, so, sorry, what was the event again associated with the... That's a prison, I believe, right? Well, it could be. Um, I don't know much about it. I, I get most of my knowledge from listening to the ramblings of locals. Uh, there's just an asterism of hoping to have like a you know a series of stars in the sky. Um, oh, I see. That I can only really get from around there. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. And where to after that? Um, I assume you don't want to just hang out in the middle of the ocean. I I hope not to. Uh, wherever the winds take me, I suppose. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and what are, uh, tell me about your stuff. Who are you? I think he's sort of just ignoring, like, Zen. Like, he's recognized that Zen's not, like, talking or anything. Zin, so he's just sort of. Zen thinks this guy is a weirdo, but he thinks a lot of people are weirdos. Mm. Yes, I'm, um, I'm an archaeologist by profession. Um, although recently I've, I have a few, I'm, I'm, I'm going as part of a delegation to the Flower Isles. I'm a, an advisor on part of their scientific council. Interesting. What a uh, what what council is that? Well, so the um, well, uh, how much do you know about the uh, the summit in general? It's it's sort of dealing with the recent uh, demonic events occurring around the world. Uh, somewhat familiar. I don't keep up with politics too closely. Mm. Well, it's hardly that uh, exciting, I would imagine. I'm. I expect I'll mostly be. It'll mostly be about um, refreshing the different sealing ceremonies. Mm -hmm. I don't expect any great uh, events to occur during it. Interesting. Or maybe not, I suppose, if nothing great occurs. Hopefully not. 
Uh, it's a giant political summit. One hopes for little excitement. Yeah. Mm. Um, and who's your is your friend here also an, an advisor? Any, you know, uh, I believe he is uh, going to be with the church delegation. Um, oh. I mean, I'm sure you recognize an Asmar when you see one. Yes, yes, I do. Yeah, sort of waves the uh, Sid just kind of like raises. Right? Mm. Okay. Is uh, is this trying to eat at all, or is he just kind of like? Bad, just like not like just sitting there staring without engaging in conversation or eating. He's eating a little bit, like I mentioned, like kind of picking at it, but like he's mostly just kind of like zoned out, looking down, or just like watching a little bit hmm. as he as he picks at the food. Uh, he's not gonna look down. Him. That's gonna look down. Realize that of grog. Uh, I'll be back in a moment. Is grog here. alcoholic? By the way. Sorry, what? It's watered. It's watered down rum. Yes. Oh. Grog is, is water, rum, and lime specifically. So that's gonna be funny. Um, and Zen doesn't fucking know what it is. So I, I definitely know for a fact. He goes to like take a sip, and it just tastes gross. And he's just like, yeah. As if it's an alcohol, do not, do not mix well. <laughs> So Zen, you start to get a little, um, a little tipsy. Um, maybe oh you start opening up a little bit. Um, I also want to ask. So Zen, Atham has got it in his mind that you know he he knows where Eb's going. He knows that she might be safe, but who knows what happens between here and there, and when you're able to get to her. Um, so what what do you think? Does does Zen spare a thought, especially now that she's or he's drunk? And he's usually drunk with Eb. Whenever he's like weird or, or you know, like he's been in the last few months with, with he's been out of his, uh, or under the influence of something, it's usually been with Eb. So maybe that sparks a little bit of a trigger memory. Um, do you think he thinks about her at all? Uh, yeah, he realizes there's really, there's something that should be annoying him right now that isn't for some reason. Um, he, like, definitely, if someone else is, like, I feel like, let's say, like, away somewhere else in the room, someone's, like, drunk and, like, yelling, and he just instantly thinks it's probably Ed doing something, like, some sort of thing like that, he's just, like, and then he notices it's not her, and he goes, oh. Um, I guess with the whole thing also pertaining to Ed, like, happening with the situ, like, with her being kidnapped and stuff. I think Zin's, like, thought is more just, like... He doesn't really know. Because he doesn't want to admit that he... He he's almost wants... He has any, uh, uh, any attachment um, to Eb. Uh, but he's also pissed off because Eb was part of his investigation, part of his mission and now he was supposed to single-handedly take down the black hand and now she's got some dick just stole you know he's a little annoyed about that but that's what he's telling himself he he partly does miss her mm, okay let's we'll see how it is um so alcarab you're looking this is your first time meeting nasmar i'm pretty sure um yeah. You know, there's there's this glowing person. They're a little. It's probably um, not to be mean to so. It's probably a little bit different than you expected. I, w I don't want to say underwhelming, but it's a bit. Um, the decorum and vibe given off by an Asmar is, is they're they're supposed to be these legendary warriors and whatnot. And you've kind of met this barely post pubescent or maybe still pubescent technically i guess um he's like 20 he's like 20. i mean still you said 19 last time so I yeah think but he's good. aged because i aged oh oh yes okay there we go i don't know it's something like that it's been more or less sure sure we'll say his i don't know his birthday he's like 19, 20 ish he's you know 
Uh, yeah. Well, I put Adam's birthday as mine, so. Yeah, we also. Yeah, I'd say it was his. <laughs> my birthday. Okay, so then, yeah, you, well, actually, I forget if we've turned past that in, in the actual calendar. You, the, listen, well, as, as a DM to a DM, these fucks, A, have made me write out 5,000 years of history, plus they're like, well, like two seconds. Hey, you're at like, 3,000 years so far, buddy. I'm still waiting on the next 2,000. <laughs> Shut up. Um, and and um, and they're like, there's two sessions, and they're like, what's the calendar or whatnot? And maybe you'll find that appreciate this because because um, you know you're an astronomer as well. And and I was like, well, you know, let's we'll do twelve months because it's easy. And like I was like, what's the distance between the, the moon and and the planet? And it's like, can we not do this? It's magical. You don't know what it's like. Listen, give me the radius. Give me the radius and like. Put a stick in the ground during one of the eclipses, and I'll figure it out for you. It's gonna give me the stuff. So like that was you. all Cameron. That was Cameron. I was just. I funny. blame you too. So if I don't know why, but I do anything think about stinks in astronomy. The fuck do you think? I, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Well, I, I, you asked. I don't know. I, so no one ever said the month had to be like based on the cycles of the moon. That's I, I said that, and then they were like, and I forget what exactly it happened. But then I, I said, asked him why they were called moon, if it, if the moon wasn't called the moon. Oh, that's a good question. Why are they called? The moon? See, 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 see. <laughs> he gets. It. Uh, you remember what I threatened? I threatened that if you got on my case about this, I would summon a Mothman and kill everyone. <laughs> Oh yeah, Mothman! He's gonna show up eventually, and especially if you guys keep annoying me. But uh, I didn't we'll get to that later. This wasn't me. This wasn't me this time. That's Mo I, listen, so you're I get think a, you need uh, to be stricter on Soph, uh, Sean. This is getting out of hand. Yeah, I know. She was bullying Will before this about his name, and then I was yeah. gonna be now this. I I was gonna you know I was gonna wait until next session to mention, but you know there was there's a newspaper that floats down that says. Um, Handsome young blonde lad eaten by Mothman on on the ah! on the, the gold <laughs> flagship. All right, I'm sorry, I've gotten us off track. Um, the the bit. the Al Al Karab. So, um, basically, you are witnessing a a a. a, a an avatar in a way to speak, so to speak, of order and the church right in front of you kind of acting like a drunk teenager right now um junk young adult sorry um what do you think alcarab is feeling kind of because because just yeah like this is a big thing to witness for most people um he's probably a bit surprised um uh, I don't know if let down is the right word but but definitely like his expectations have not because, you know, he pictured, like, a big, regal, serious, emotionless being, right? And, um, that's really what sure. he's getting. I'm usually emotionless! <laughs> Not right I'm now. I'm Cameron, I swear! He said emotionally? Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> he's having a moment! <laughs> This is, the most, this is the most, like, emotional I've ever heard Soph get, actually. And this is, like, not even zero <laughs> stuff. This is about, like, it's like, I, I, I am mysterious. I am a mysterious uh, lad. Mm -hmm. um, I think, okay. Um, Go ahead, I think he's actually going to, like, make, like, a, a good berry under the table, right, which is a spell I have that it makes like good food. I think he's gonna mm -hmm. offer it to Zen. Oh, nice! Food. That's how like not intimidated he is. Magic food. Magic Labless food. bread. <laughs> do you uh, do you want this? Uh, it's not. It's not poison. Well, if I poisoned it, I wouldn't have told you. Like. No, it's it's not poison. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. No, I'd, I'd say no, regardless of whether or not it were. But um, I think it makes three if I'm if I'm honesty. So I can I can eat one myself to, to prove that it, it's not poison, and then offer the other two to Zen. Whoa. 
I feel like Zen is. He, 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 the good food is a little bit. You know when you're sad and you just want to eat a bunch of food? And like, be sad? The good food is like, okay. He'll take some. He's also, he'll be fine. Even if it works. He's been through worse. I think. So do you do you take the do you take the good berry from him and eat it? Yeah. All right. Um, Alcarab, roll me uh, ten d ten of damage real quick. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm checking. <laughs> um, but as you reach out to to grab the um, to grab the the good berry, um, you, there is like a sudden like spark that kind of shocks you both um, when your hands kind of almost meet. Um, it's not really strong. It could just be, um, static shock, like normal, especially when you're in armor. Um, actually, I don't know if armor makes it worse or not. That'd be an interesting study. Anyway, um, it'll probably ground you, right? Pretty much. Uh, oh, it, 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 well, is it static oh. electricity or is it something magical? Because I can't answer that question if it's one no, of the No, no, I was, okay, never mind. I, um... <laughs> I'm not. Uh, I'm not looking for you to disclose uh, the effects of etheric uh, radiation. Oh my fucking god! Um, all right, then no, and then 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 never mind. Um, and uh, and you pass the good berry to him. Um, and I guess then eats it. I like. An, I like check it out for a sec. I have my tech. I mean, this wouldn't really do much. I don't think, but I can detect good. Evil, so I can tell if it's good or evil. It's just a just plain magic berry. Plain That's magic true. berry. Thank you, Adam. <laughs> yes. It's actually pretty good, I would say. Good berry is a traveler's staple. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. um. <laughs> Wait, what are you laughing? Adam wouldn't let me have something that would <laughs> Well, well, I just I said this in it. my private one. Send it in the main chat, you motherfucker. All right, fine. Well, because it's they're not Canadian. Or at least I don't assume. I don't know if Will is. But, <laughs> well, not. Yeah. Well, I, this was a. I'll just... Sorry, I didn't want to distract everyone. Uh, <laughs> too late. <laughs> yeah, too late. <laughs> <laughs> Oh it's not that funny, man. <laughs> yeah, it's covered in cheese. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. It's just fucking bread beat and covered in yellow cheese. It is hilarious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, it's also, there's like a one. I like that. That there's there's that is a very American thing to do. As a side note, is is you have like. You have tomatoes, but they're smothered in mayonnaise or some other kind of like <laughs> condiment sauce, and then you have like one tiny line of vegetables. And then you put bacon on it. What? <laughs> that looks kind of good, though. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I think I could have like two bites of that. That would last me for an entire week. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it fills the stomach. Is that steak in there? <laughs> Ooh, I'm pretty sure that's steak. Too. I'm pretty sure yeah. that is steak. Yeah. Anyways, All right. Uh, I'm. I'm sorry. Anyway, uh, moving on. Moving on, yes. Um, so you, I apologize for that, guys. Um, the the spark happens. You give the good berry. You both kind of munching on it. It um, doesn't kill anyone. Uh, it restores some of your. Well, you already restored your health, but we'll just say it makes you feel a little One more. One hit energized. point per berry. One hit point per berry. Yes. Um, so you feel a little bit more energized. Um, and um, you, what was I going to say? That's pretty much it. Yeah. Do you want to say anything to do? You, do you do you thank Alucard or sorry, um, Alcarab? Sorry, not Alucard. Oh, um, I'm gonna have fun editing this. Come on. Uh, like maybe a little nod, like a little thanks, but you know, nothing crazy. No, like, thank you very much. No, it's like, thanks. No, in the way he does. It's a very... He mm. wants to just go back. Mm-hmm. Um, Atham, I guess you're probably done uh, getting your grog so you can sit back down. 
Um, yes. And you would maybe have logicked out, so you want to go to Scarthorn to um, get um, Ed back. This person wants to go to Scarthorn to map out stars, which um, we haven't gone over it, but due to the nature of Tier C and that it is not a actual like mathematics it's not as easy to math out the stars and everything like that i know that's tragic for two of you but um especially because the uh the moon also affects things pretty heavily there's been some changes in the constellations and the um celestial bodies as of late um and especially traversing the great basin ocean when you get further away from land it gets a bit more dangerous and harder to navigate so having somebody who's a good mapper of the stars um, actually would be quite useful in getting there because it's, it's hard to get past um, some of the like whirlpools and um, some of the uh, how should we say more dangerous reefs that are alive and stalking the waters for ships to eat um, are basically better to have somebody who can navigate your way through it than not um, so he might be of some use to get there are we in the northern hemisphere of your of your world, or are we in a specific hemisphere? Uh, oh God! Well, I'll, I'll let you know right now. It doesn't matter because half the world is gone. I mean, yes. We'll t tell you what. Well, we're in the the kind of northern hemisphere, I guess. Um, sure. I assume we'll you're in sort of Europe latitude. My shield yeah. works really well, but only for certain latitudes. Well, yeah. I, I hope you rolled the dice like... right, because uh, <laughs> oh my god, the wrong hemisphere it might be gone. Oh no! Wait, but Tiercy doesn't even have hemispheres. It's like a flat plane of existence. No, it it, yeah, it wasn't. Hemisphere would have to be a part of a sphere, and it's not a big yeah. sphere. Yeah, and bits of that sphere are gone. Anyways, I can tell you about the deep lore later, but uh. <laughs> Yes, but these are carnivorous reefs, Max. The uh, the the fish life or the aquatic life in 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 the Great Basin Ocean can get quite crazy. Um, also, you didn't mention what the anachronism was. Still, I'm still. Also, waiting. I'm pretty sure most reefs are dead now, Max. Anyways, so. Oh come on, man! Don't depress <laughs> us don't like that. Don't bore me. Well, no, the Industrial Revolution hasn't happened yeah. yet. Not, I know. Not in, uh, he's I'm talking about in real I'm life. Talking about, I, I'm talking about IRL. All right, anyway, the point being is, go. is I'm going to – you guys hear above a big thump real quick, and you hear something flutter by chasing a a, um, a, uh, a lantern that fell over the side. Um, I'll just mention that real quick. Second of all, to answer your question, Will, um, there are – Tier C is kind of a world that was forming and has been stopped forming by powers from other planes. Um, so the actual, like – geometry of it is is a bit hard to describe but um think of like you know those things that um um you would like get as a kid where they were like half of like a rubber ball and like you would push them in and then they would like pop up really high it's yeah. kind of like that i'll say just to, to throw something out for you science fucks but that's about all that's about the best i can get and anything else that makes it weird or not makes sense scientifically it's magic okay it's just fucking magic okay is that good enough for you guys do you want me to, you want me to what's the magic theory on it oh my god all right does that make sense though does that does that help with what your question was relevant to or was it yeah. we, we, i mean i can help so long as the stars i have line up with the stars where we are okay yeah that's fine yes they do we'll say like they do like there's a north star of some kind or that you know, what? Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> reaching for the scientific boundaries here. I, I, I took that North like, Star. Yeah, I took some liberty and to describe that. Uh, a chitinous <laughs> army. Mean, the, appeal, the integrals. As as Atham is ranting and raving at that god for 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 not having enough math in his world, a chitinous oh, arm appears no. through Atham's chest and grabs his. One of his heart, or one of his hearts, or however many fucking hearts he has. I don't know. All of them. Um, and that's where we'll end the session. Got no. No.
<laughs> no, but listen, well, you know what? If you want to, well, if you're if you're a DM and you're an astronomer and you would have fun with it, I'll I'll commission you to get a lore accurate like scientific boundary for the scars for the stars. I'll fucking let you do that if you want to. But we'll get to that later. Um Atham, you get back from your fucking grog and you sit down and they're like, I guess um Zinn is munching on a good berry, slightly drunk. Um Alcarad is um or uh, Alcarab, sorry, not Rad. Um is is I guess contemplating um, his place in the world now that finding out an, an Asimar is not as quite as uh, distinguished as he would have thought originally. Um, and you've thought over the fact that maybe he would be useful for um, the the re es re ebb rescue operation. But I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Maybe you can. I don't know if you trust him yet or whatnot. But I will say, in universe, it would make no, sense. I, to I, I on that. Um, and you know what? I'm gonna ask in character, please. Okay. Um, so, you mentioned getting to um, Sean. I forgot. Like, you put in the name in lore. Uh, Scarthorn. Scarthorn. Scarthorn Island. Scarthorn Complex Facility. I forget yeah. the. I don't Scarthorn. Yeah, yeah. Here, I'll, I'll I'll put it in. I'll put it in yeah. uh, lore. Really. I'll deal. start writing it. I'll, I'll put it in first. You mentioned, yeah, you mentioned getting there. How, how are you going to get there? I don't think this ship is stopping there. I didn't really have a, much of a plan, to be honest. I, I didn't really know where it was. I was hoping if I just traveled around enough and asked enough people, I'd figure it out. Do I know sort of relative position of it, Sean? Or do I just know of it? You would know. Search, you would know of it. The ocean. You yeah. would know of it. Um, I'll put it in the lore there, and I'll start editing to give some more accurate information. But um, a lot of things in the Great Basin Ocean move. So you know the general. You know the general um, place of it being near, like between you and the Flower Isles. So it's likely going to be uh, the place that they take Ebb. Um, yeah. So what you would probably need to um, to get there is you would need. Uh, special coordinates um, that um, certain people are given um, every like few months or so. When it makes a big change in location, new coordinates will be given out. It's kind of like a passcode that changes every once in a while for like a case. Well, it moves. By the it vines moves, move yes. along the ocean floor. Oh, very interesting. Okay. So um, it's, it does. Yeah. So it's it's hard to wait find. a second. If you know where the um, the stellar event is going to happen. Surely you must know where in the world you need to be to see it. Yes, you do. Yeah. I okay, well, we can do We just need to find a ship then to take us there. If that's the case, then we'll know exactly where it's going to be at that exact time. That's true. Right. Well, well I think we I can, can work getting us... A sh I think I can work getting us a ship uh, at the next port. I'll have to make... I don't know if I'm going to be able to make a call here, but um, I'll see if I can figure something out. Um, yeah. All right. Excellent. Yeah. So uh, yeah, keep keep that in mind. I'll uh, I'll get back to you on transportation. I might be able to figure something out. Okay. Mm. Yeah. No yeah. codes. Yeah. <laughs> Subplot <laughs> skipped. Success. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no, don't cut stuff, Sean. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> uh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, continue. Yeah, all right, um, fine. No, 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 no. You guys, please continue talking. I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you ramble on it. You're ramble. Okay. Um. Well, here, why don't you tell me more about this? Um, Stellar event that's going on. What's uh share some details. Uh yeah, so there are uh there's like a uh, I I personally have a theory that um and there's a there's a group of stars in the, the constellation of the chalice, right? And um one of them is is much brighter. Than all the rest, and, and I think it, it it's actually I think that actually means it's closer, right? 
the figure stars, the brighter they are, the closer they are. Right? That makes sense. So if we can watch it pass in front of another star, then I'll know it's at least closer than that star. Hmm. Right. But if it goes behind, then it must be further. Now, the star in question I'm looking for, because there's no way to really tell the brightness is an art, right? Like, once they're on top of one another, <laughs> they I'll look play. the same. I will, uh, Sorry, did you say something, Sin? Um, Sin is going to drink more of this concoction, uh, and he's going okay. to tell them, you guys talk too much. Please. Shut up. Hmm. Well. well fair enough. I, guess uh, I open a psionic uh, link to... Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, Karab's mind. Alright. Why is it is, then? Uh, so, please. Um, the psionic connection, just, just think it'll come into being. It's just... Uh, Keep going. Uh, one of the stars is particularly red, um, like very red. And so I figure if the red disappears, I'll know that it's behind the star. But if the red stays uh, there, I'll know it's in front of the star. Right. Correct. Yes. Comparing the colors. What are you using to... Um... Is that... Uh... I'm going to point to the, the shield thing. Um, and again, this is all static. <laughs> There's, there's no noise, it just looks like I'm gesturing at it. Uh, what's, uh, is that part of your uh, equipment, or is that uh, just additional? Uh, this is part This is part of my equipment. This, uh, this, um, so it's, uh, the shield itself is, like, pretty, like, it's circular, and it's pretty, um, on um, and it's got all the holes drilled in them. And if you look closely, you can see like ridges cut between some of the holes, um, sort of resembling one one might imagine a night sky constellation straight down. And so this is my this is my star map. Even though ah, even though area. even though they're discussing and it's just quiet now for Zen, Zen's just like. I, I can imagine him in a semi drunk state, just like not really face planting, but like kind of like putting his head on the table. All like sad puppy like, and he's like, I just don't get it. <laughs> not about the star stuff, but just in general. He's just. Well, no, no, no. They don't know. You don't. They don't know why he's said it. You can't. You can't explain. Uh, I think I can. I think I can guess where. It, you can guess. What I was mean talking you... about. I. I, <laughs> I listen. Do I have to make a roll to guess if Zid is? No, I'm not saying that. Map? I'm just saying don't don't let the character. I'm just saying let the character. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, right. I'm making. The, I what? What are you saying? My assessment is. No, 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 no. I was telling her not to tell people what oh. like, exactly he was thinking. You should you just say what he's saying and then and then you guys yeah, interpret he said his it. Thing. Yeah. So go on. Okay. Go on, Atham. Um, <laughs> they were being really hostile to me this episode. I, just, I don't understand. You should have put some like propaganda in right now. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm going yeah. to spell out every time he uh, mispronounces Alakrab's <laughs> name. <laughs> Al Alakrab, more like Alakrab. Am I right, folks? Alakrab. Yeah. Like There's more edits. Crabs are like animals. <laughs> Am I right? Um. I have a picture of the shield. If you want me to send it. Yes, and, uh, please. Or at least a, a drawing that I've made. So are you uh, a druid? Yes. Just yeah, like I, I think that would be an accurate description. Oh, circle of stars, I'm guessing. Yeah. I know a little bit about. I don't know. I can't profess to know specifics, but... Uh, this fish very, is yeah, so. my plight. I this this is going on this is going on at thought speed. Okay. Um, 
Yeah. Very interesting. Still, yeah, sorry, did you... still's just mumbling. He's gonna just mumble. Yeah. He's be like that. He's... I, gonna uh, switch off of uh, sciatics for a second. Something that matters, then. You look lost in thought. <laughs> Duh! Obviously. Yes, I apologize. That was a little insensitive. Well, do you have anything you want to say? I don't know how he wants to say that. He wants to say something. Are you just get it? Get 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 the get the get, get back into angsty? Basically, a teenager. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Edgy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I have to think. I have to think. I, this is hard. It's I'm over here. You should, you should be like, Dad, I think he was the one. Dad! <laughs> um, well, Sonny. Are you okay? <laughs> um, he's just gonna, like, yeah, he's just flopping. He's, his head's, like, flopped on the thing. He's like... I don't... I don't, um, I don't know what to do. Like I said, we'll uh, we'll take care of it in some fashion. Just uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull the, uh, the 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 grog away from Sin and replace it with water. Uh, just um, don't drink too much right now. Just uh, I'll I'll come up with something. So boring with just you. EMOTIONAL DAMMIT! <laughs> um, well, I mean... True. Yeah, that's... That's fair. <laughs> oh. All right, I'll, I'll, I promise it'll be more interesting in future. Maybe I'll start a war. I'm good at those. What? What? What are you talking about? What? 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 Let's just imagine everyone right. at the table going, what? Here, yeah. Zen, we'll take a second to, to have some introspection here in the sense that you... Uh, you look up in your drunken state, you see Atham, um, who you do know is at least much older than you. You don't fully comprehend his age, as did... Ab did not. Um, I, yeah. <laughs> so doesn't know how old yeah. I am. I've told her explicitly. We, we, we just so, really so hold on. Which, which, but you do know that he is older than you by a significant amount. He is not someone like Torin or Oloric. Orlin, who are, are kind of authority figures, but have the strict sense of code of the church. And so he's like an elder who's outside of the usual problems that you have to deal with when it comes to church authorities. So, yeah, he's probably somebody who's more experienced in these matters. And you mentioned, I think, I think at one point, Atham did mention that Oh no, I guess you haven't mentioned that you used to have a family to your I've, to your... I've mentioned I've had family before. I think I've mentioned I've you, have you mentioned your wife? Not, not to, not to us. Not to I don't think you've mentioned in character. I don't think you have. No. You've mentioned Damn. it out of. That's unfortunate. Yeah, but you, you would expect that Atham seems to have worldly knowledge, so he's somebody that you could maybe ask about relationships and love. Who oh, is not? Who is not going to immediately shut it down as a non-paladin duty? You don't have to, but I will say that at that moment, I'll say that Zin does recognize that Atham is somebody oh. who's like an authority figure that is not or like oh, no, an older he, he figure. Does. He does know this. He's trying to he doesn't know how to say it is the problem. He's kind of by the whole like whining drunkenly, he's trying to get something out of you know, something, but he doesn't know what out of it, you know? He's just kind of like this sad. I think Alcarad is sort of like just looking back and forth, back and forth between like he's he's sort of getting that there's like definitely something going on here that is not 
like is far deeper than just simply talking about stars. Um, and so I, I think I think you'll say like, you want me to step out or I mean, I look over at Zin. What's uh, uh, up to you? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna look over to at. My uh, bed. I'm gonna look over at Al. Al. Al Karab. Uh, could you? Could you give us five? I think. Yeah. I'm gonna go get more food and food and grog. <laughs> right. I heard it almost get you there, buddy. I you almost you almost did what I, <laughs> I did. Yeah, uh, no. I almost uh, you, you fucking. <laughs> oh yeah, my Al, Al, Al Crab is uh, Al Crab is a funny meme. <laughs> I won't lie. Uh, although that is a lobster, and you know it. Um. Well, I'm not, you're, you really want to bring in another scientific field that we have in the chat right now? Do you really want Max to unmute and start yelling He's at us about fucking... not the scientist! No! Please, no. Zin's having nightmares about that. Um, so... <laughs> Crabs. <laughs> Crab, before we start messing it up too much, uh, goes back, gets some some more food as Zin and Atham are lead... Or Atham leads Zin to the cabin to to sleep off the drunkenness. Um, you guys walk back in my room. You're going to go back in your room? Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, oh boy. All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to follow. This is... Uh, they, yeah, okay. What do we see? To um, make sure... Under, under, the, under the, the pretense of getting Zin home in one piece, I'm going to get Zin back to uh, his cabin. And uh, try and forestall any damage. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was very genuine. Um, the um, you get in, and um, there isn't much because you guys were um, kind of taking a while to, or you, you don't pack heavy when you were on these trips because you know adventurers. But you get back and there is a pack on the bed that was Cyril's with some of his clothes in it, like a spare, few spare robes and whatnot. Um, he has a little chest of books that he likes to bring around that he, because he was always a big reader. Um, what a nerd. What a nerd. Oh, wow. Um, and um, he also had... Um, a little sketch pad um because he liked to to draw a little bit that was there um on the on the on the desk by his bed oh my god oh my god he's so why is he's just an adorable little human okay um i don't know i just feel like he's such a like a i don't know he's such a good character he's such an adorable little human what the hell um no. He and Alcarab would have gotten along well. They're, they're, they're both dandies. Um, mm. <laughs> Dandy little fellas. <laughs> okay, how does Zin react to seeing all this? Zin, at first, is used to it, but then he's a little sad, as 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 is to be expected. And he kind of just, like, that just walks in. Uh, and then kind of like, I guess he goes to his side of the room. I guess it would it would be like a two person sort of dealio. And he kind of just he looks at the other side. He kind of just sits on the bed and he just goes. I don't, I don't get what he meant by that. The whole like, I, the whole not not knowing what it mean. I. It just feels cruel. I 
Then he looks down. <laughs> Atham has to deal with this shit. It's funny. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it's like a door. Ooh. Dad, that thing. I mean, um, well, yes. Uh, to say it's highly unfortunate is overstating, is understating the matter. Um, but just remember, this is temporary. This is a setback. That's what it said, too. It did. Oh. Mm hmm Just set back. Well, it's not would worth my away. time. Ah. Set back that way. No, I meant set back in... When I said you and I were two of the most people, powerful people on the planet, I wasn't kidding. We can and will get Cyril back. And Ebb. I just... I just don't... I don't know how, and... Just, I don't... I don't understand any of it. I'm so confused. Like, what was... <sighs> groans and like, like, he like kind of groans all like... <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> uh, it's beautiful. Um... Anything. So, okay. Well, why don't you hear? Why? Oh, sorry. That was, that was just a joke oh, I was okay. making to you. <laughs> okay, okay, good. I was. I don't know. Um, well, here. Um, listen. The church. That thing in your head. They... They might not back you on this. And, you know, they have their own reasons for it. And to them, they're probably very good reasons. But... But after... If you, if you want to get Zero back, you have my full support. And you have the support of everything I can bring to bear on the matter. Then's gonna, like, put his, like head in his hands he's just like i don't i don't know what i want or i suppose i'm supposed to want anymore like <laughs> supposed to want is a very overrated feeling and i can tell you that with millennia of experience you're so, so one <laughs> pursuing what you're supposed to want is well if I was pursuing what I was supposed to want, I would still be wearing furs and chasing monsters in the wild. Then why not? Because other people need me. Because I'm the... I... Atham, you don't... You don't understand. I am... The church. Uh, I. It's not them and me. It's me. It's all. It's all just me. I'm. I'm the. I'm the church. I'm not a. <laughs> it just You're makes no church. sense. Well. Okay, let's 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 back up for a second here. Maybe that'll help. So, the church. What does the church 
want to do. If you're the church, you can do anything. You are one of the most powerful things on the planet. What do you, what does the church desire? It. What makes the church happy? Destroying all demons. Valid. A very worthy goal. I highly support it. Yeah. But what happens, as in, for example, this moment, there's no demons at the moment. There's no demons here. There is no demons, despite what... I may be willing to classify that got spar son of a bitch as, but there were no demons. I hate him. Day. Yes, we'll we'll make him bleed. Don't worry. Mm. Oh God. <laughs> dad, the, dad, the, okay. I, what? Okay. I guess if we're really, it's really bugging you. Why don't? You tell me who Cyril is to you. Let's start from there. That'll help us define a lot of the moment. Okay. Is it, is, um, it's kind of the thing he's been wrestling with for a while, so he doesn't really know. Uh. Make it here. As quick as you can. First thing that comes to mind. Who is Cyril? The, the person that I, I that I, I like to be around. Okay. Oh, well, that's a start. Well, that's a start. So, extrapolating off that, what, and this is really what your choice will depend upon, and I'm going to glare at the, th at, uh, is it, can I call it Lixius? <laughs> yeah, you can call it Lixius. I'm I'll going to glare at Lixius as I say this. What is more important to you? being around Cyril or making him happy? It happy. It? Is it? If that's the case, the choice no, is clear. I, I just don't know what you mean by it. You, it, it, you don't... It, that, that's, the, that's me. The angel. The separate consciousness. There's no separate part of it. That's, that's just part of me. Does it... Okay. If it's part of you, and like you say, it is you, then... It's your old... like there's two different... My, like, it's like my thoughts are split. Like, I don't know where to. That's the problem. I can't. I'm one way, but the other way, and I just don't know. And this, this is stupid. This is stupid. This is dumb. I don't know why I'm getting my head all mixed up about this. I just. I, maybe I need to just go back to the, to the island. I need to get. And I should listen to Lear more. What does Lear tell you to do? Focus on my duty. At them, everything I do, people are watching. I can't just... You do what I... And he pauses for a second because he's about to say the word want, but that's like yeah. the whole thing he's confused about. He pauses yeah. and then he quietly says, do what I want. Yeah. 
I can see the problem. Um, well, I don't know if I can give you a perfect solution to this. I don't think there is one. Um, you're... Listen, I I know what it's like to pursue a goal tirelessly. I've done so for, well, generations. But if you're going to dedicate your entire life to something, and I mean your entire life, Every waking hour, every bit of your existence, every desire, you have to be fully on board. That there can be no doubt. If you're going to. If it is going to consume your life, it better be exactly what you want. For me, for example, my. dream of it's a bit complicated but to put it simply peace is that is something I wish for every single day every waking minute is something I keep my mind on at all times I am never sad that I'm doing it I may at some times think about what would happen if I pursued a sort of normal life, but I would not give it up for anything. Would you... Is there anything that you would give up the church for? Because if there isn't, then I don't think you have a choice to make. But if there is, that's some reflection you need to make yourself. This has never, ever, ever, ever in a billion years ever crossed Sid's mind. Um, to the point where he is like, 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 like a gas that, like, like he just like, <laughs> but like, he's kind of like, well, what? Why, like, I want him to at one point, like, like touch his, like, finger to his lips and be like, like, what? Why does it have to conflict? Why does it feel like it is conflict? Why can't both? Ah. Well, I mean, I could explain the whole series of events that led to exactly conflicting, but it was mostly inevitable barring some events, but the... I want, I want... Yeah, to, be, to be honest, it conflicts for no specific reason. It just does. I want, I want, I want Zid to... Oh, he's gonna ask the question again. He's gonna, he's gonna look up at Atham with, like, like, his like lip is trembling. He's like oh, sad and drunk, and he's very confused. Um, no, no. He's gonna be like Atha, uh, that thing uh, that one time. Sorry. Oh no! Stop. Sorry about that. <laughs> I thought that was Did your you? like internal monologue with Atha. He's like, oh no, stop. So there. Can you hear? It's a terrible time for this to happen. <laughs> oh no. He's got his AirPods and he can't hear us. Oh no, he got his he AirPods out. He can't hear us. Hi guys, can I call you back in a second? I'm sorry. Alright, sorry about that. Alright, a little bit. Uh, his, his, loving, his loving family, the true bane of his existence. Sorry about that. I um... he went dad deaf. <laughs> what? No, sorry. I, God, like, what a display of toxic masculinity. Um, his son is opening up to you and you just teach him that. Nope. 
push it all down and ignore all those feelings, boy. <laughs> Did I? Oh, that's a shame. So long for like... That doesn't. That doesn't sound like me. <laughs> no, that's all right. Okay, I'm sorry. All right, let's get back into the scene. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Come on. Sorry. So if you go ahead. Um. I want Zin to ask. So after everything that happened with the the whole Waldo bitch in the mind and how he asked Cyril what love was, he's gonna turn to to Atham and ask what it is. Go Atham, what is I've heard this tossed around all the time, like even is love. Is that something? It said that I wanted it, but I don't know what that is to want, and... Well... <laughs> Atham goes, okay, kids, so... Ah. Uh, no, shut up, yes! I'm really... Ah, uh, thank you, Brayden. I made that exact same joke a few sessions ago. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, I hate it. Why you guys always do this? I'm trying to be. <laughs> We're in sync. All right, all right. Let's get back in the scene. Um, so, well, I'm going to give two cop out answers here. It's it's a desire to. Be with someone for your entire life. Now, like homies? Just kidding. Just kidding. Yeah, yeah, like, like, yeah, the homies. Uh, <laughs> real good homies, like, uh, like they, a killer. And they were just list. really good very good friends. homies. Really, really good friends. Good homies, good friends. There, just friends. Uh, <laughs> um. It is also generally considered one of the universal um, feelings we have as mortals. I mean, there are some exceptions, um, but generally, yeah. See, I'm. I don't know if I'm the right person to ask about this sort of thing. I have. <laughs> ah, posting tavern posting. Get back into it. Uh, I'm a uh, I'm a gold man. I'm a here here. <laughs> we'll put a put a moratorium on the tavern posting for a second. Let's let's let them have the series. <laughs> no no, it's fine. Um, because I'm delaying anyways. Because I'm trying to come up with something very clever and very succinct and very profound to say. Uh. <laughs> But I'm a scientist, so I I can't do that. Uh. I would say that it's okay for. Why, no, why? I, I can do it. I can do it. I'm being. I'm being no, 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 no. I'm just saying it's it's. Yeah, fine. Go ahead. Sorry, you go ahead. I, I mean, when it comes to devoting your life to someone, I don't know if I'm the right person to ask about that. I've been alive a lot longer than I have any right to be. I've. Yeah. Bit of love a few more times than I have any right to be. I I gave up on most of it because I didn't have any right. But it is it's something that's extremely hard to find, and I think that is the court is the general lack of definition. It is something to experience that can only be done on an individual basis. It's only something I'm going to say. It's only something you can experience with Cyril. Oh. <laughs> um... Zen's gonna like kind of nod. Um, his little cheek things are gonna grow a glow a bit again, like when he blushes. That happens. 
and he's like, so I, so I wasn't entirely wrong. And then he gets a bear, and he's like, oh, and, and, never mind, never mind. I mean, mm. Mm. well, listen, I. I don't know if I can answer all your questions, but if you have any more, I can do my best. Uh, I... I can promise Ab won't ever find out if you don't want her to. Fear. Fear crosses his face! <laughs> oh no. Maybe it's a good thing she's not here. Mm. Well, <laughs> anyways, uh, um. well, you know, I'm gonna say that I won't make you roll a con saving throw, but Atham, you look down after looking away wistfully to see that. Zin is starting to snore peacefully. Um, yeah, Zin's getting a little... I think he definitely... is getting sleepy. I don't yeah. want him to fall yet, but he's... Alright. I'm gonna go... I'm assuming there's some kind of candle in here that's lighting it up. I'll go blow that out, and then I'll close the door and leave. I sure. wanna see the sketchbook. Do I see the sketchbook? I'm sure I walk by it on the way to the candle. I, wanted, I was going to say, um, yeah, probably if Zinn didn't look at it right now, especially when drunk, I don't think he would before he went to sleep yet. Um, but maybe. Uh, you do see it, Atham. Uh, you see that it is open to a page of a half-drawn uh, portrait of Zinn. Hmm. That's just so cheesy! God! <laughs> <laughs> and she's gone. <laughs> and good. All right. Perfect. Hold on. Let me. <laughs> um, I knew that. I'm get going, it, guys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shake my head. Well, smooth moves, boy. Uh, this shit delicatable. See, oh, she's back. This is I what was I not expecting anything else, but I knew it was cheesy. I knew it was happening, and I'm full of. I'm just going moving. to like carefully step over it so as not to disturb it. Mm. Oh, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's on the it's on the um, on the nightstand, so you don't have to step. Oh, it. okay. All right, excellent. Then yeah, I'm going to. I'm not. I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to leave it undisturbed. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to blow out the candle, close the door, and head back to my own room. Um, on it's dark now in the hallways. Uh, you go out real quickly. You're just right next door, so you don't have to walk a long way. But um, in the darkness of the hallway, briefly. Um, you see all of the people that you've outlived, that you've loved, um, lining the hallway. Um, mm. who do you think shows up? Well, I've got the find the lore for these, so I'm hold on a second. Uh, <laughs> you can give, you can give general outlines, it doesn't have to be anything general outline. I mean... Well, well, let's, let's you can even it. say like what your relationship there's, was, like, uh, and why, and like multiple wives, sons, cousins, oh, yeah. family members. Like, who do you think? Like, uh, even if it's just a general um, relation. Yeah, there's. I mean, there's a, there's the whole original family minus a brother. Um, there's there's wives. There's good friends, colleagues. Um, uh, that Adam's done th this before the flash flashbacks trauma it hurts but in a thousand of years I'll be fine and I'm gonna, you go I'm gonna walk past Ooh, okay, okay. Right. You do something fun the last one uh, distinct blue moon hue he fucked the moon, goddess! My girlfriend turned to the moon. No. Literally. That's rough, buddy. That's oh my rough. god. <laughs> Enough of your references. Yes, yeah, so you turn, you to go past a glittering... I will never apologize for Avatar The Last Airbender references. Oh my god. Savages! 
Mm-hmm. And and you tuck into your room, we'll say. Um, oh, I'm not going to bed. I've got more work to do. The work never stops. Okay, stop. fine. You, you, well, I mean, are you going in your room or are you just going to be wandering around the ship? No, I'm going in my room. I need privacy. Okay. Cool. okay. Um, Alcarab, uh, what are you up to? Do you, do you sleep? I forget. Um, I, like, meditate for, like, four hours. And then okay. Just like acid. Yeah. Um. Um. So I might wait around in like the mess hall, because you know they're like we're gonna be five minutes, and it's been I don't know maybe like twenty minutes. Yeah. Um. And so I think I'm just gonna leave at a certain point. Okay. And um, I guess we'll say you find yourself. Um wandering on deck, uh, looking up at the stars. Um, and you do notice, um, you've, you've spent a couple of nights here, you know, um, this side of the world. Um, and you look up at the sky and you see the familiar constellations that you've mapped, um, along with the ever-changing skies. One thing that still strikes you even after all these nights is that the moon is now um, no longer has its um, trail that leads up to it of moon dust um, in its spiral. Um, it back a few, uh, once in a while there will be a spiral still, but it will be pitch black and hard to notice amongst the sc- stars, um, which is very concerning because usually it's a silvery white. Um, and I guess just, what do you think Alcarab feels seeing that? Probably a bit concerned. Mm-hmm. I mean, he doesn't really know what's going on, but he knows that it's been happening and everything's been kind of fine. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, I think he's concerned by just the fact that, like, it's, it's not like, just a deviation from the status quo, really. Mm. And also gets the fact that when it does, then it's black, which is not how it usually is. Mm-hmm. Roll me a perception check real quick. If you can't, just that's fine. I'll, I'll figure out something else. Uh, uh, 14. You look around and um, you kind of notice that the air and the the horizons around you, the the off in the distance, that everything seems to be darker than usual, and it seems to be pitch black, um, an eerie kind of consuming black that just looms right over the edge of where the lanterns uh, keep the boat lit. Um, and it's cold, colder than it should be right now uh, on the ship. And it just seems like the stars themselves seem to have that dark, very darkness closing in on them. Um, you feel a bit of a bump, and you look over the side, and you notice that there seems to be something just moving underneath the surface. Um, and a chill goes with it as it moves past, and it bobs the boat a little bit, but... You can't very much see what it was. It was just endless depth when you look down. Is it like does it does it pass or does it stay like dark and and it it passes by. Um it it there's it was kind it still looks like you know just depth and glossy finish of water at, at night, but something when it passed by just felt you felt the the spaciousness of the ocean even more as it did for oddly enough, even when there was something there rather than not. Uh, and it passed by and you could feel that it bobbed the ship slightly, which maybe if you were below decks, it would be harder to notice, but when you're on top, it's a little bit easier. Yeah. I might see if I can find. Just find because what? he seems to be more well, find just because he seems to be more well versed with this, this mm. part of the world. Okay. Uh, you can probably find his cabin if you'd like. Yeah. I'll go around. I'll, I'll see if I see, like, a golden glow coming from underneath the doors. 
<laughs> okay, yeah, then you find it very quickly. There's this, um, you can see it peering out of one of the, there's there's a silver glow and a gold or golden glow right next to each other on the, on the, um... <laughs> That could be anyone's I'm, I'm Yeah, I thought most people glowed. I thought we weren't special, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah, it seems to take it back. I just choose not to. Yeah, he's humble. No blue. All the I mean, I'm gonna knock. I'm gonna knock on. <laughs> All right, Mr. Atham, take it away. Um, Atham was settling down to... Uh, to start something, but uh, as soon as he hears the knock, he's going to get up and open the door. Ah, Mr. Alacrab, I apologize. We uh, um, were delayed. The the young one was uh, tired. It's, it's really, it's it's no worry. Um, how familiar are you with, with this part of the world, I suppose, and, and events that occur? Um, I mean, I've, I'm pretty familiar with all sort of... Yeah, I, I, I'd say pretty familiar. Um, yeah, what's uh, what's on your mind? There was a... Uh, I, was, I was above deck just now. I don't... Did you feel a... Uh, or anything in, in the ship? I felt okay. the ship move. Yes, I thought that was a... I thought that was just some waves, though. Was that, was that something else? No, there was like a... Creature of some kind in in the water. Not a whale. I'm guessing you wouldn't you wouldn't have come down here just to tell me it was a whale. So no, um, no. Right. I mean, it, it wasn't. It was. There was also um, everything seemed to go very uh, like super intensely. So all right. Well, it's probably gone. Let's go check up on the on the deck, and I'm gonna make my way up. Is there, any, any, is there anything going on up there? Or is it mm. pretty normal? Well, you'll notice that um, similar to what he did earlier, that um, there seems to be a darkness that is, is oppressive um, to the point of supernatural around the boat um, that seems to just kind of be as soon as you reach off the boat you, it almost looks like your hand could disappear um and the water depths look just unnaturally eerie in the sense that the deeper you look the more ocean you see and there's almost changing colors down there it's always some kind of blue green or or gray or just deep dark blue but it it keeps shifting and changing the more you look down um but the ship is maintaining its course nothing is bothering it otherwise um the stars look beautiful tonight but even they seem to be trying to recede from whatever is surrounding your ship um but phenomena like this is not exactly uncommon but this does seem a little creepy yeah like, i'm gonna send out a sensor uh, sorry so go ahead i just want to say make a bad joke it's like when in mario kart when you get squinted that's kind of like what happened <laughs> now, for real i got you it's just all i like got you figured me out <laughs> it's been the mario squid this entire i look time. for a blue I shell you know, you you know, as somebody who's from California, I find that accent very offensive. So, you know, that was that what was more of a say? that's more of an East Coast Italian accent. You know, I, uh, I, I was just speaking. I throw with a Koopa shell. You know, that's that's come on, that's my I culture. Say that. <laughs> I didn't say I I, I threw with a Koopa shell. <laughs> I threw with a Koopa shell. That is exactly what you said. Come on, Roland no. Cameron, back Let me up. Uh, he said that exactly like that. <laughs> I don't know. If she <laughs> said it, but I don't. Yeah. Yeah, you know what, Cameron? All right, since you didn't you didn't back me up, uh, all of a sudden a legendary sword um, falls down and falls right in uh, Alcarab's hands, uh, or Alcarab's hands, and um, it's it's a oh, plus good. ten on damage, plus fifteen to hit, um, breaks oh, all nice. immunities. You know, well, good for him. 
<laughs> he immediately stabs you in the back and insta kills Ather. It also has the attribute insta kill Ather. <laughs> Plus ten isn't enough to kill. That's not. That's oh, not attribute. attribute is... Yeah, no, that's a trait, guys. Come on. That doesn't follow correct. Uh, no, <laughs> correct. I don't um, believe this man. If <laughs> I don't believe this man's really a DM. <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe this man has ever written Wizards of the Coast rules before. Uh, <laughs> well. Um, so, I, so I send out a sensor. Uh, let me pull up the exact one. But um, where is it? Nomadic mind. Nomadic mind. Here we go. Ooh, excuse me. Um, phasing eye. Uh, actually, Chris, uh, psychic sensor. Sensor uh, is visible. Hoppers in air. I receive visual information from it. Uh, yeah. All right, I'm sending that out, and it can fly. So I'm sending it out into the blackness. Or I, actually, I'm gonna send it up first and see how far the blackness extends. So you extend it up. Um, also, let me know if you can hear my cat. It's starting to meow outside the door. So if you do, let me know so okay. I can a little bit. Uh, oh my god we fed her like 50 million times she's like 22 and she eats like a fucking truck um i'm gonna move a little away from the door all right so um you send it up um and um you are able to how how high or how far away can it get from you um uh, oh uh, concentration is an hour. It can travel up to... There's no limit on how far away the eye can move. Okay. Yeah, no limit. But it's just well, limited. Well, I'm sorry, but you see... Um, the, uh, the, the... Well, as a physicist, I expect you to have the distance formula. So if there's no stated oh, velocity, yeah. I can't I can actually... Yeah, no, there is, there is a stated velocity. It's 10, 10 feet per second in American units. Oh, in freedom units, please. Um, all right, then if, in that case, you keep it climbing um, higher and higher. Um, this is it, assuming a turn is six seconds. I'm sorry, what? This, never mind, continue, sorry. All right, yeah, uh, and then so you you keep sending it higher and higher. Um, you don't you're not able to really break out of the darkness per se. The the it seems that the only thing really allowing you to even see outside of like the ship's general vicinity, even with the eye, is that um, there seems to be a ray of the moon that is shining directly on the ship. Um, the darkness itself, when you try and look around with the eye, it really isn't able to capture it. But as far as you can see, it looks like mainly the the sea level is um, the sea level is itself um, covered in darkness. But um, you can kind of you get a very bare glimpse of some twinkling lights of one of the cities, probably one of the Erosian or Atolian cities. Atolia, probably specifically, because that's closer. Um, Mm. But that's about it. Um, you All right. If I can't anything like that, I am going to then activate uh, uh, scroll, scroll it as fast as I can. Perceive the unseen. Uh, I can see the auras of invisible or hidden creatures. Um, no range. So as long as I can make visual contact with it, I can see them. So is there anything out there? Anything beneath the surface? Any creatures? Um, I'm going to say... Honestly... Do you have... Tr does the eye have true sight? Uh, no, I'm not using the eye anymore. This is, this is my own thing. It's from Athens' point of view, not the eyes. Oh, okay. Um, okay, that, that was important. And it, this, um, this isn't true sight. This just detects creatures. No, 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 I, I get that. It was more of like you had to make visual contact and there was something obscuring the eye, so I figured I was asking if it could yeah. see through that. Uh, that's, that was very no, but if you're, if you're using it, that's fine. I understand. Um, okay. For you specifically, um, you're able to kind of... Does Atham have seen uh, dark vision? Uh, no, but this unaffects it. This, this makes oh, okay. him unaffected by it. So yeah, it's 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 it ignores any lighting conditions. 
I'm looking. <laughs> this is this is my astral sight. I'm looking into the beyond as I'm uh, parsing the fucks out there. Um, okay. For that, then, um, you're able to see below you there is um, plenty of life. Um, some of it is just dumb, you know, normal fish, um, which, honestly, I think we should just kill all the marine life in, in, you know, both in the game and outside of it. Uh, there's really no point to it. Um, other in than Minecraft, that... Uh... <laughs> like my... <Sorry. laughs> I thought no, no, Minecraft. In Minecraft. I, uh, Minecraft no, I don't want to get... I don't need the feds coming after me. We 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 say in Minecraft. Oh, okay. oh, I see. Okay, I got you. Yeah, in my oh, in Minecraft, yes. Um, ah, oh, you're at home. Ah, <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, you see below you though that there is a few massive signatures um, below you that are, are wandering around. Uh, Might they huge... happen to be whale shaped? Friendly whale shaped. Worm shaped? Um, they're, not they're... worm shaped. Please oh. have exactly four uh, appendages. No, there are there. There's. I mean, you can see one whale. Um, but oh, yay. Um, oh, you do okay. see a bunch of other. Um, there is there is at a further distance down, as I have been advised uh, by my uh, expert counsel. Um, because that they are much deeper. The the carnivorous reefs that I mentioned before, you would recognize one as ah. crawling around down there. But beyond that, you see something that looks like a giant serpent. Um, you see something that yeah. looks like a pure disc of some kind with rows and rows of teeth. Yeah. Um, and you just see something that is just looks like a writhing, a, a wriggling mass of tentacles. Um, beyond that um and as you're continually looking you see that one of them does grab the whale and uh they all start to tear it apart and um together ocean, yes together um and the ocean becomes thick with blood and guts um right below your ship uh but nothing seems to be coming to the surface to feed on it and there's a smell of iron in the air from the blood before Max suddenly corrects me and says, "Like, um, actually, whales don't have iron in their blood in, in uh, real well, life." I was gonna say, "Here, see, they they do have iron in their blood." I think Whatever most. God. I think iron is a component of, anyways. Um, it can't. I'm sure that there's some animal that has some weird fucking blood. I don't know, man. I think blood is pretty. Anyways, anyways, uh, I'm. This isn't my field of expertise. Um, <laughs> Okay, so uh, good news and bad news. Good news, not a demon below us. Bad news, right. something down there that can eat a whale whole. Oh, that's not particularly good. No, but um, it just ate a whale, so it's probably not hungry. That's true. Uh, I'm going to try something also. If that's right. I have a, I have a moonbeam which usually looks like silvery white, like the moon would. If I just cast that, like, a beam of light from the moon off of, like, this bit of the ship, is that still, like, normal? You cast, you cast, um, moonlight off of your shield into, like, where are you pointing it? it just, well, I think it, it comes down, like, from, from the heavens, and I just point it somewhere in the water to the side of the ship. Um, you are able to cut through um, some of the darkness, and you kind of have a sort of a flashlight um, that that is able to kind of see through the darkness. Okay, so it looks like relatively normal. The outside does look like like above the water. Yes, yes, it does. Um, there is definitely, I guess, something weird going on, but for the moment, it doesn't seem like anything is attacking you directly, and you can't. See, you're, if I guess you do a little sweep, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, moving around a bit. Yeah, then you don't see anything like that's trying to sneak up on you by any means. Um, off in the distance, though, you do see something that looks like it's sticking out of the ground or out of the water. Oh, okay. Shut up! Shut up! Hey, I, no, out of the ground would have been worse, but yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, um, okay. 
Uh, what what does that thing sticking out of the ground look like? Is it vaguely okay. like pole shape or well, what's what's the general? Generally, like kind of yeah, not like pole shaped. It's very far off. Like you can see, like you're getting a good good amount of uh, range with this this light, but um, this one it's still kind of far away and a bit obscured. So. Um, you guys are heading that direction, though, so that is that is it is becoming clearer as you stay on the ship. Um, it looks like a pillar of some kind. Okay. Interesting. Keep an eye on um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go up to the. Uh, there's someone steering the boat. Yeah. Yeah. There's a helmsman right now. He looks to be right. like a little out of it. No. Out of it. Uh. Like, he just seems to be, like, have a dazed expression on, him, on his face right now. Uh, excuse me. Oh. <clears throat> yeah? Yeah, what's up? Um, just wondering if that pole sticking out out there is anything to worry about. Pole? Can't see a damn thing. I'm sorry, I've got this massive headache. Um, uh, yeah. I... Who's got the light on? Is that Jaius? Jaius, do you have the is our navigator on? He's looking around, kind of confused. Is um, there a navigator here? Are there like, there's, any other people? No, there's nobody else on deck right now. Uh all right, buddy. Um, why don't I think you look like you need a a drink of water or something? Why don't you go grab that quickly? I can. We're not turning anytime soon, are we? I can just hold the steering wheel here. If uh... yeah, yeah, it's straight on, straight on. As long as the navigator has you, yeah. I'm um, gonna turn to uh, Alcarab. Uh, are we on the right course? Uh, are we on? Are we on at least the same course we were on before? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good. We're fine. All right. Well, that's good to know that we haven't been thrown off by some kind of magic sea thing. Um, I'm going to try and... I'm going to send my sensor out to that pole. Sure. Uh, one second. I'm going to have to disconnect and reconnect. Something's going on with my Discord. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, oh. oh, there it goes. Well, no DM. Anarchy! <laughs> He's back. Uh, he's back. Right, okay, cool. I don't know what that was. It's just for some reason I couldn't look away from the thing. Anyway, so yeah, so you send your sensor out, um, and as it gets closer to the the um <laughs> it's an M M Um the um you get closer to it and it's a large um basalt pillar. Um, and there seems to be some kind of, um, there's a way up, there's like a, a, a docking area and then there's like a way to walk up, um, to the actual, um, structure that's on top, which there seems to be some kind of, not lighthouse, but some kind of watch tower of some kind, um, that seems to be, um, just there. Mm. It seems to be very old by the looks of it. I'm going to fly the sensor up to it. See if I can peer inside. Um, it gets a little difficult given that um, you're still kind of, you're kind of going in and out of the darkness with, uh, I'm assuming Al-Karab is, um, uh, is pointing it at the different stuff, but um, you're able to see the front of it and um, it reads, uh, there's this plaque outside the door that reads, um, and a bit older common is um, Canon Cleric's Observation Tower um, Basalt Cage for the Obelisk. Man, I wish I knew more about the Obelisk. <laughs> you do recognize what that is, though, right? Uh, yeah, I recognize it. Did you? I don't think you finished writing about it, though. No, no, don't go look at the document yet. Don't look at it. Gag order. Oh, come on. Fine. It's not, it's not, there's, there's no, the obelisk itself doesn't have much more, but the, you would know that these towers are, um, are you looking at the document? I'm uh, not anymore. Yeah, that's what I thought, you son of a bitch. Um, the, I'm going to have it over, but that's precisely the point. 
um, the uh, what's it called? Um, the obelisk itself never really had much more discovery on it. Um, but the you would know that these basalt towers were the canon clerics. Um, observation and like kind of warding off stations to stop people from going too close to it um so with that you can assume that this seems to be an abandoned station they're still in use for some parts of the world but they've been definitely downsized since it's not become a big issue for a few thousand years now um we're gonna go over to um the uh to see zen real quick um, and we're going to see, um, basically him zooming in from, you know, we're going to go over the deck and through the, uh, boards on the deck and we're going to go into his cabin and we'll see Zin kind of shifting and quaking and just kind of in a cold sweat, um, seeming to be in the midst of a nightmare. Um, no. Oh, so, so why don't you take us through? What do you think? You didn't have as many when Cyril was around. You seem to you you didn't tell the party this, but um, Zin does suffer from nightmares a lot uh, for most of his life, and now it seems that you're having an old fashioned one. It doesn't feel like what happened when you were at that little cottage in Temple on. This one feels like one of the old ones, and a classic dream that used to occur to you happens where. You're on an open field, you're surrounded by other paladins of your order, you're facing down a charging horde of demons. Um, some of them look very similar to the one you fought in um, to, uh, New Xanter, and they, they start to kind of clash as to two lines meet as like it's an old pitched battle. And in your dream, you hear the screams and, you know, the terror of your fellow paladins as many of them die, being torn apart by demons. You try your best to more and more <clears throat> fight on and survive, but then it gets more and more surrounded and there's less and less of the light and more of the tangling chitness and growling bodies of the demons until it's just you left and you're able to see as your sword swings a few times that the body you're in right now doesn't look like yours for some reason and as you fight on you know they get closer and closer and eventually you're torn apart by demons limb from limb um there's pain there's anger there's there's howling and laughter um <clears throat> and all you can think of, or you can't, but no matter how hard you strain to try and voice something to scream or to let out some kind of agony, nothing happens. You don't, you're not allowed to say a single word. Oh, no. So, what do you think after that fades away? What do you think Zinn's nightmare looks like after that? Do you think that he tries to contact that thing that Athen was talking about? Do you think that, um, I guess, yeah. What do you think? What do you think your nightmares look like from there? Um. Well, uh, I think it's just from now. I guess that nightmare ended with him as basically a dismembered body. I'm seeing like 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 limbs torn, blood everywhere. It's it's just carnage. Like, it's disgusting, it's foul, it reeks. Um, and, like I said, like, he can't really, he can't really, like, scream or say anything. He's just like, I don't know where to go from here. Uh, I, I wanted well, to... Well, actually, tell you what, as, as you say that, that the body of that, of what you were, or who you were, stays there with limbless, bloody, its face half torn off, um, its eyes, got one of its eyes gone, the jaw ripped off somewhere and bleeding entrails out, just a disgusting scene. Um, and you go to that white room of where you were before with Morcella and then after that, um, before your dream with Waldo, and you sit there looking at it and beyond that, there is something floating there 
winged and haloed, um, white on white, and yet you can still see it, and it just floats. <laughs> um, I... I think I just, like, I look, I just see the, the thing standing there, or floating there, or flying there, mm -hmm. and, I mean, there's, like, this, I don't even know what Zin would do at this point, like, he's just been through all this. Um, he doesn't have to do anything, necessarily. Is there anything he wants to ask? There's nothing prompting him anymore. He's just left in that room. And you've had many nightmares where you just sat in this room as, from a child to now a young man, where sometimes the silence itself as you sat in this room was maddening more than anything else, more than the visions of terror you got. Um, yeah. Uh, ooh, ooh, okay, I'm trying to think of what I want to say. I don't know. I don't know what to say. I don't know, like, I think he's, he's, like you said, I like the idea that, like, this being in this moment, being stuck here is, like, maddening. He, I, I think it, it physically hurts still. Like, like, his head still hurts the more he just stands there. And he, he's trying to find the words, like, trying to understand something because mm -hmm. I feel like there's so many questions he wants to ask there's so many things he wants to do but he doesn't really know what exactly or where to start so he's just kind of sitting there like in agony and pain and he's just like what what do you want from me is like all he's able to get out. Hmm. You hear it say, what I want every time, everything. And it just kind of, you feel a wind rushing past your face and different pains erupt all across your body, torn apart, stabbed, um, disintegrated, um, stabbed in the back. Um, just many different emotions flood over you all at once, and a tear falls down your face as you can tell that there's a deep feeling of tragedy in your soul, but you don't know why. Um, and you can feel that it's it, you get angry for a second, but then the wind picks up and you wake up for a little bit, and your eyes are immediately drawn to the sketch pad. Uh. And your head is still spinning from the trauma and the long day and the crazy stuff going on in your head. And you're not able to fight being awake for much longer, but there is one thought on your mind as you fall back asleep, clawed back by the talons of the Sandman. Um, the last thought in your mind before you go to sleep is Cyril. And you fall back into that dream, into that place. And you stay there for a while. We're going to go back to really to Al-Karab and, um, and Atham. Um, Al-Karab, I guess you're shining the light on the pillar now. You kind of, Atham's kind of helmsmaning it up. Um... Atham, you are, uh, do you, the door is open to this little watchtower. Do you go inside? Uh, with my sensor, yes. All right. As you go inside, can it hear things or it just is able to see? It can also fly if we want to actually go in there. I think that's probably a bad idea, but let me see. That's fair. Um, 
see. I think it is just visual. All right. Well, I'll say you scan around for a bit. It takes you a little while, um, but eventually you are able to fixate on what looks to be a kind of sarcophagus um, that starts rattling um, as you do, and it, it's it's trying to push something inside is trying to push itself out. Oh boy. Okay. Well, there's something on that tower. Fingers crossed. It's not hostile. I doubt it's friendly, though. Um, yeah, I feel like it's more likely that I mean, it's a big black tower in the middle of the ocean. I feel like whatever thing it doesn't is. set a good precedent. Yeah. Um, wow. Okay, wow. I'm gonna I'm gonna take us. Uh, I'm gonna try and steer us a little bit around this tower so that we're not getting too close to it. As you get closer, there's some magical incantations that um, are common in towers like this because it's so small. Uh, it calms the waters nearby and lets your um, lets your ship kind of stop if it wants to. Um, and uh, you steer yourself around to um, kind of be side by side. You could try to take one of those little skiffs and do it that way, or you could just jump off and uh, jump onto the tower if you would like um, right now. Um, uh, the coffin's still around. Yes, and in fact, you your eye kind of closes in on the coffin, and it begins to rattle harder and harder. Um, and as you guys are kind of getting closer, you can hear an eerie. Something. Sorry, go ahead. Can I can I recognize anything about this coffin? Is there any any distinguishing marks? Any. Um, there, there actually isn't, um, surprisingly. It seems to be completely devoid of, um, completely devoid of any sort of markings like that. Interestingly enough, um, there does seem to be a fact that it is less dusty and, like, kind of decrepit than the rest of the surroundings. And it does seem to be a bit different in that it is not, like, attached, um to the um to anything in the building like it's not a, it's not uh put into the building it seems to be like it could have been carried in there right um okay and what actually are... with that we're gonna have your eye zoom in on the casket and a hand reaches out and squishes it now i'm actually we're just gonna leave it at the, it the... Through things. you can't squish it ha. Well, maybe the hand phases two now. No, no that's you can't. I mean, you could, but that's not how that works. How dare you, sir? D and D doesn't take into account phase. Okay, you know what? It's oh, you know, you're right. Maybe, maybe anything that uses phase should be uh, should be banned. No, <laughs> no, know, no. Maybe, I meant like not ready for phases. the system. But in all honesty. Um, we're going to zoom in there as it gets closer to the lid, as it's, there's some rattling and noise coming from it, as this eerie wind whips around with the, mixed with the groaning that comes from inside the casket. And we're going to start zooming out from the ship into the clouds, and um, that's where we'll end the session for this week. All right. Cool. Win. Now, I apologize for ending on a cliffhanger, but it has been three hours, which I think is, yeah, is no, appropriate no, for. No, I felt so bad. I was like, oh, I kept rambling for a while. I want to end it with... I want to I want to say one thing before, but it is okay. I would say it. Uh, next I, time. Want, I wanted Zid to fall asleep by grabbing the little notebook and holding it. Yeah. As he fell asleep, like a little teddy bear. I mean, you can say it, yeah. We can say that yeah. when we wake up like that next time. Uh, get Craig out of here. Oh, yeah, let's get Craig out. I don't need more to edit. Get out of here. Get out of here. Thank you all so very much for listening in. Well, back to what I was doing before. Sure hope I don't have to answer any uh, emotional questions. What is. I've heard this tossed around all the time, like, even is love. Is that something? It said that I wanted it, but I don't know what that is to want. And